All right, apparently we are live. I think that's working. Nice. All right. Uh, so in answer to your question, Patrick, I'm planning on going live at 6 p.m., but I thought I'm pretty much ready now, so I might as well just crack on with it. It's actually a little bit disconcerting not having, because uh, it's live, obviously, I don't have the same kind of like feedback that I normally would do. And uh, it's a bit weird as well, because like normally when I'm sitting here, I've got tunes on or I'm like playing a game or something. But for once, it's like totally silent in my room, because obviously I can't be like playing out tunes or whatever. So it's uh, it's a little bit different, bit uh, bit interesting for sure. Oh, I'm glad you think so. I'm glad you think so. Um, so I have my uh, on one of my screens over here somewhere. I've got my little I've got a couple of couple of things that we can talk through. Audio only in the left. Okay, that is an easy problem to fix. Uh, do, 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 do. Advanced audio properties. Mix that down to mono. So that should be fine. That should be fine now from this point onwards. Um, but yeah, let me know if that's still kind of messed up. I think I've got the right audio input there. Um, yeah, what is up? How is everyone doing? I'm uh, I'm quite looking forward to to have one having everyone in here and doing it a bit more of a like chill more relaxed kind of thing because I didn't want to yeah as I said in the the last video at the end I didn't want to go to like you know coronavirus outfits or whatever because I think yeah it's a bit like it's a bit shit doing that like trying to capitalize on stuff like that so I thought I would rather just we can all just forget about it for a little bit and we can all just sit here in isolation and have a good time instead. Um, so while I was explaining all that, I failed to do the one thing that I was trying to do, which was find my little list of things. <laughs> I've got Animal Crossing on the brain, big time. Hey, Mig Hunter, how are you doing? I think I, did I say Animal Crossing at the start of like three videos ago or something? I feel like I did. But it's, uh, it's a big part of my life right now, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, stuff, stuff that we're going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, the, the Animal Crossing tech weapons. Yeah, so um, yeah, I've been making a couple of little patterns on Animal Crossing, which has been fun. And yeah, a couple of little tech wear outfits. Um, there's been a couple of guys as well who have done like some really, really cool stuff. So in fact, I have those. Do I have them to hand? Uh, I possibly do somewhere. Um, but yeah, there's there's been a couple of guys out there who have done some really, really cool tech wear outfits on Animal Crossing and it's really sick. So I would definitely recommend that. In fact, do I? Yes, I do. I have them saved here. So if you give me just one sec, then I should be able to load these up on the little stream. So if we hit this, hey, there we go. Yeah, so check these out. These were made by, I never know how to pronounce Zio, Zio Krimer, Zio Krimer, one of the two. But yeah, he made like a bunch of different ones. Um, a little like acronym jackets and stuff and you can see that they are super cool and they're like pretty true to what they kind of should be obviously they don't quite have the gradients on like the j28k and stuff but they're uh they're pretty sick nonetheless so i'm a big fan so i've been wearing a couple of these different ones um which has been nice and uh there was someone else as well who i actually can't remember who it was but someone else made the cavempt uh the document sweater that I have as well. So I've been wearing that as well. And uh, something else that I can hopefully show. I was gonna put these on Instagram at some point, but uh, I might as well show you guys now, since we're all here, since we're all having a fun little time. Uh, if I find these, so I did a couple of like real life versus Animal Crossing comparison shots. So let's check this one out, if I can make this scene work. Uh, Nope, that's not right. That's not right at all. Uh, but I can fix that. You can tell that I am a real expert at this. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, that's real Animal Crossing versus real actual me. So uh, there you go. Enjoy that. <laughs> um, yeah, as you can see, I've been putting way too much time into this game. So... <laughs> uh. Um, but yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. Flexing on the game as well as in real life. But to be fair, buying Animal Crossing and buying a Switch is like the cheapest way of getting a full acronym outfit. So 
that's uh, that's that's a good one, I guess. I hope, uh, if you just heard that, that's me cracking this open. So because of quarantine and stuff, obviously we've been doing uh, more of the online shop kind of things, and uh, obviously loads of other people have been doing the same. So they don't have everything, and I ordered I ordered some cokes, and they didn't have normal ones, so they sent me. And he sent me these little 150 mils instead, so. I get to feel like a giant with this, like, tiny can in my hand. Wow, his hair is better. Savage. Absolutely savage. I feel like there's a little bit of a delay between the chat and the, uh, of what's actually going on. I think, I don't know if I can change that now that I've actually gone live. Yeah, I don't think I can. Have I seen the Russian memes to myself? I've not seen any Russian memes, but I would definitely like to. What's the deal? What's the deal with the Russian memes? You gotta fill me in on this. Uh, Cause yeah, I'd, I'd be interested. I've never really seen any like memes or anything of me, which is probably a good thing. I'm not really sure I want loads of like weird dodgy stuff but uh yeah yeah it is it's very fancy it feels like i'm gonna drink cocktails or something but then i just i just don't when will i collab with my girlfriend uh my girlfriend's not really very into techware or any of this kind of thing so it wouldn't be i don't know it'd be a bit of a weird collab and i don't really want to be one of those people because i know people absolutely love doing those videos where it's like styling my girlfriend or like I dressed up my mum in tag wear or like my dad or whatever and I don't know man it's just a bit I feel like you're using like your friends and family as elaborate props which is a bit I don't know not really feeling that it's a bit weird I mean if people want to do it fine I know it's very much a like it's a very youtubery thing to do isn't it uh, but yeah, it's it's not quite for me, I don't think. Unless people are really that desperate for it, but I feel like they're probably not. Um, am I going to do more GORP core slash hiking core content? I would definitely like to do that. My, <laughs> my main issue is that I basically only have black trousers. So that makes it a little bit difficult to get those kind of outfits going. But I definitely want to change that. I want to get some more stuff um, and then do some more color based things because yeah, I wear a lot of all black. And I feel like we can do a bit better than that. Uh, my opinion on mainline Arc'teryx is pretty good, honestly. I've got quite a few, quite a few Arc'teryx bits. I've got the Atom LT, which has popped up in a whole bunch of places. I've got the Skyline shirt, which is really good. Um, my girlfriend got me a cool fleece. Uh, this like little blue thing, which I was going to wear snowboarding, but then that trip got cancelled. Thanks coronavirus. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been really happy with everything Arc'teryx that I've got, whether that be mainline or valence. So in general, very solid brand for sure. <laughs> yeah, styling my girlfriend. Yeah, none of that, none of that. Uh, I've not really tried to influence her too much, to be honest, to wearing like tech wear outfits. I don't really want to like, yeah, I wanna, don't want to force anyone else to like wear stuff that they don't really want to wear or whatever, so... Um, you know, it's all about, it's about finding yourself, you know, find what speaks to you. And if, uh, if you prefer other stuff, then that's fine. But I think she, she's more of the kind of like Scandinavian minimalist type thing, I suppose. So, um, you know, she's got like one or two Acme Studios bits, uh, a couple of things like that. So it's, it's that kind of vibe, which is cool. Nothing wrong with that. Um, what's the most overrated trend of 2019? I don't know. If it, 20, 2019 feels like a very long time ago. A very, very long time ago. And I honestly can't really remember. I guess like really big, fat, chunky shoes were all the rage, weren't they, in 2019. So I guess that was... That was probably like an over overplayed trend. Especially because people would love wearing like... They get the Balenciaga Triple S and then they have the skinny jeans and it's big time like he boot too big. It looks like... I don't know if you guys have seen the... <laughs> I can't not... I can't not show this image because it's so dumb. That's what it, That's what you look like if you wear Balenciaga Triple S's with skinny jeans. You look like that dog. 
so uh, so don't do that. Wide wide pants with big shoe. There was uh, Slack, who I think is in the the chat somewhere. He drew a good diagram, which is like I don't have it to hand, but it's like pant down here, and then that goes over shoe, not under. When the when the shoe's like over the trousers, then you've got boot too big syndrome. You've got you got little puppy boy there. Oh, I've got to scroll up now to find find more questions because the chat's going too fast. Speed of light. Uh, do I have any tech web brands more for women? That's an uh, interesting question. I don't, I don't really, there's not that many that are like female specific. And a lot of the ones that are, are far more kind of athleisure focused than they are tech wear stuff. But I think tech wear in general is a fairly, uh, I think it's, what's the word? Like gender agnostic, I suppose. I don't think it's inherently like a really masculine thing, apart from that a lot of the cuts are, you know, they're not like super slim fit or whatever. Um, but yeah, apart from that, like a lot of brands and a lot of styles, there's no reason why women can't wear those things as well. Um, but yeah, the, the kind of the women tech wear brands, I guess, are more the kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess like Lululemon, stuff like that, because it's like designed specifically for women. And then it's got the kind of technical stuff as well. But there's loads, like a lot of the more mainstream brands that will have their women's collections as well, like Arcteryx, for example. Uh, halfway, about halfway through my tiny Coke already. Uh, let me just switch this back. Nope, that's the wrong one. I've just shown my hand there. I've got multiple cameras. Not that they'll necessarily be that useful, but there's two of them. Um, uh, do I dry clean all my clothes? No, I don't. Um, yeah, I normally just wash things normally. If you put things like on gently in the machine, then normally it's fine. Uh, please tell me you've heard of Corbin. I have heard of Corbin. I'd say that of the, like when I started doing tech wear videos, I was really like the only person that was regularly doing stuff about tech wear. And now there's like a couple of other people, I think. Um, Corbin for me is one of the best in terms of, yeah, people that are regularly doing this stuff because I think he's got, he's got like a different take on it, which I like. He's, he kind of approaches things a lot more from the kind of affordable side of things and trying to find those like genuine hidden gems and different things like that and the kind of less hyped pieces. So yeah, definitely, definitely respect to the channel for that. That's some good stuff. Uh, join the simp community. I'm okay for now, thank you. But the real question is, is iDubs a simp? We truly do live in bizarre times. iDubs being a simp. And... Uh, I saw in my YouTube recommendations yesterday, Leafy doing a like roasting iDubs video. Like what is going on? This <laughs> could not have predicted this year. That's for sure. Um, suggestions for first tech wear suitable trousers. Um, it kind of depends. Depends on what you want, really. Depends on what your priorities are. My first ones were the Nike Lab ACG cargos, the ones from 2016. And they were pretty good. They served me pretty well. But I think that kind of price category is the right sort of place. They're kind of like 150, yeah, 150 pounds. So up to like $200. Because then you, you'll get something that's decent, but you know, you're not paying like acronym price or whatever. Because once you start going, I think it's almost like a cutoff of like sub, I don't know, 100 pounds. Like the, the things that kind of market themselves as tech wear or whatever, they tend not to be that great. If you're looking for the cheaper things, then... The, the military surplus stuff some people have had success with. I did not a couple of months ago with my selection. But yeah, there's some good stuff around there. And there's plenty of, yeah, just, just kind of like the more outdoorsy brands, I suppose. And you could always get those altered or tailored. And then you know you'll actually get a decent product, whereas some of those tech wear branded things are not always quite so hot. Um, Jay says, tech wear would be so much cooler if it didn't have the skinny trousers and face masks. Yeah, I think... A lot of, a lot of tech wear or a lot of the the kind of enthusiast people in the scene, the guys that are like really kind of spending the money and like following the the top brands, I suppose, or the more luxury ones. Um, I think they've kind of moved on from that sort of trend. Like you don't you don't really see people like that wearing face masks as much, and those wider cuts of trousers are definitely in a lot more. Like a lot more people have been buying and wearing acronym P thirties now, for example, which are obviously very different to the, the P10s or whatever, which are the kind of 
Um, I think they're, they're really like the, the fit that you would associate first with Techwear. And you know, they're like the Enfant Levy and there's twos as well. They've got the very aggressive cut. But yeah, people are starting to play around more with wider stuff, which is cool. Because uh, yeah, I'm up for that and I'm definitely going to buy some wider things going forward. That's for sure. I feel like I've not like reached the end of the line with, with tapered things, but I've got things that are good now. Like I really like the Amez 2, so I see no real reason to keep buying more tapered pants. I kind of like, I found the ones that I like, they work for me, they're good, let's do some other stuff. And uh, yeah, non-black things as well, that's definitely going to be, uh, yeah, that's going to be one that I'll do more for sure. Um, <laughs> what does my girlfriend say when I go full tech wear? Sometimes she's a little bit like, oh my God. Like not not embarrassed, but a bit like, this is a bit over the top. Because there's like, if we go out together, obviously there'll be a bit of a disparity between like, oh, cute girly look that's really fun and nice. And then there's me like dressed like a cyber warrior that like doesn't want anyone within 20 feet of them type thing. So there's definitely that kind of thing to contend with. We definitely don't do the, the cool Korean thing where they buy and wear matching outfits, which I think is kind of cute, but yeah. Can you, you stop it? My blind is going mad because I've got the window open. Flapping about all over the place. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, now the, the chat has gone all over the place. What? I can't understand Cyrillic, so there's loads of like Russian text going on. I guess people are just having a chat, which is cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, where about am I? I've lost my, my track. Genuinely surprised by the fact that Corbin and I both have girlfriends. I didn't know Corbin had a girlfriend, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, well played to him, I suppose. I don't know if he's done any like styling my girlfriend in tech by videos. <laughs> if so, I guess I'm calling him out right now. Um, opinion on 2020 Riot Division. I've not taken much of a close look, to be honest. But you know what? You know what? We can do that right now, thanks to the magic of the internet. So let's have a little look. I hope this keyboard is not like disastrously loud, by the way, in everyone's little ears. So let's have a look at what's going on here. Yeah, so I've not... Um, go away, leave me alone. Um, yeah, I've not really been sent any Riot Division stuff or, or kind of spoken to them much recently, you know, for the last kind of year or so. Um, and I've not not worn their things as much. Um, there's a few things that I still like and I still wear, but a lot of the other bits I feel like I've got better versions of them now, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just kind of the, the way that it works, I guess, you know. You, you get the kind of like... The more affordable stuff and then the better stuff comes along, you, you upgrade, you make some changes, and then you don't really want to go back so much. But let's have a little look. Let's see what we got going on. Um, yeah, so the Lizard jacket, this was one of my favorite things when they originally released it, which must have been, what, like two years ago now? Something like that, quite a long time. Um, but yeah, I guess they're, they're clapping back with a new version. I kind of like this gray one, you know, actually. That looks kind of fun. Um, so I'm kind of about that. I don't know if they've got... Have they got any other pictures of that? Let's see. I don't know if they've got anything. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so this is kind of interesting. And, you know, I always like when companies try and do something that's a little bit different and a little bit less kind of derivative, especially in the more affordable space, because obviously so many brands do basically just kind of like do knockoffs of acronym or like, we made this acronym product, but we took away all the good stuff and then we made it cheap, which is fine. Again, you know, like companies can do whatever they want. Brands can do whatever they want. Um, but whenever, you know, it takes a little bit of bravery to start making coats and like this light gray color because, you know, black is the, the way to go or, or green or whatever. That's the kind of traditional tech wear colors. So, yeah, I think this is this is quite cool having it in a bit of different color. I don't think Riot Division really nail it with their hoods. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, they always seem to be kind of like a bit tight fitting and a bit close, which is not really my vibe. I've kind of been spoiled, I think, by the outlier hoods. The hoods on their jackets are just, they're just great. So yeah, I think <laughs> in comparison, everything else now seems not quite so hot. But yeah, this is kind of interesting. So I'm kind of down with this. Uh, let's see, let's see what else they've got going on. 
Uh, am I planning to collaborate with Hamkus? That is a very good question. I think Hamkus are a very cool brand. Um, and I have found some of their recent things very, very interesting. So uh, let's just, let's break from Riot Division real quick and we'll check out Hamkus. Because if you guys haven't seen this yet, then you're in for a real treat because it's some cool stuff. Uh, is it going to display properly? Maybe not. Uh, we'll see. Let's go. Let's check out the store. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're working fine now. Yeah, so if we do... Can we do, like, jackets or something? And then it will show us new stuff. Yeah, so, like, check out some of this stuff, for example. This is some next-level... Some next-level crazy shit right here. Yeah, interesting brand. Very interesting brand. Garment dyed stuff. So very, very unique finish. I mean, these cuts as well. You ain't seeing this anywhere else. Very unusual. This So this is a Chinese brand as well. And uh, obviously the the rep with the kind of the, the, I guess people say like a Chinese brand and Taobao brand in like the same sentence, but obviously not always the same thing. And, and in this case, definitely not. Like this is very much a... Uh, a conceptual brand um, and much more in the high fashion category. I mean, you can tell that partly by the pricing. You can tell that partly by this really crazy direction that they're going in here, which is very, very different to a lot of other things that are out there on the market. And uh, yeah, honestly, I think that Hamkus are a sick brand. Obviously, very much more in the fashion and the, the looks rather than like pure functionality. It's not like, oh, yes, I've got my Hamkus dune multiform coat which is designed after some kind of fish i think it says yeah the manta devil fish uh yeah that's that's all i need to keep me dry like no no this is very clearly a fashion based thing but uh yeah it's it's sick and i'm a big fan of that uh so yeah very very long-winded way of answering the question um potentially potentially i would very much like to check out some of this stuff in greater detail so if there's any potential for that then it will be on the channel for sure. Uh, so the website, yeah, the, the brand is called Hamkus and the site is hamc.us. Uh, but if you just Google Hamkus, then it will come up with all this stuff. But yeah, they've got they've got some crazy stuff. So I know, um, yeah, some people out there have bought some of this stuff already. I've not seen too much of it. I know uh, Quantius has one or two bits, I think. Uh, who's the guy that owns <laughs> Amdus? not Hamkus, very different brand, um, doing like DIY bags and stuff, who we did a video about that a couple of months ago. So yeah, he's got some stuff. Uh, there's a guy called Orion as well over on the Techwear Discord, uh, Techwear Clothing Discord. Um, he's got some stuff as well. So Bong Hollywood says he approves Hamkus as well. So uh, yeah, yeah, there's some, some good stuff for sure. Uh, Nick says, have you considered starting your own brand? That is a very good question. And uh, that question will be answered at some point. It should have. I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna accidentally reveal too much information. That question should have already been answered, but uh, yeah, some delays, some delays on that front. But there is there are things coming. Um, how are you feeling? The upcoming acronym drop item says Slack. Yes, this is another great point. So let's have a look at acronym. No, not acronym. Acronym. There we go. So yeah, this is this is obviously how can we do a live stream without checking out the new acronym stuff, right? So, um, is this going to work? No, I don't think it is. Uh, so I can't filter down by the the seasons but we'll just go through them kind of one by one anyway so uh we've got the j81 this is uh using i can't remember what they call it but it's like a super thin gore-tex layer um so is this yeah okay the website is like a little bit funky in this like weird mobile -y kind of mode that i've got it in um but yeah the the acronym the ss20 stuff they've gone for a much smaller collection than previous seasons, which is a little bit disappointing to me because I kind of like having lots of things to choose from. But there's certainly some stuff to like about the, the J81 here. It's got the little, it's got the Hot Topic hand sleeves here, which I think is quite cute. I think it looks pretty decent as well. My reservation would be about the material, not because I don't think that it's 
uh, a high quality and a high performance material because it absolutely is. But for me, having something that is this thin, I think it's it's either single layer or two layer fabric, but it is like really, yeah, it's, it's uh, what what is it that they call it? I'm gonna make myself sound like an idiot by just saying something that's wrong. Oh yeah, Gore-Tex Infinium Windstopper, of course. Yeah, so it's it's unlined. So yeah, this stuff is really, really thin. It's not designed for durability, really, compared to the regular three-layer stuff or Gore-Tex Pro. And in the summer, I don't know, it, it never really gets that hot, I feel. Like, I'm happy to just wear a regular Gore-Tex shell. And yeah, I'd be a little bit worried about damaging it as well. Cause like you can even see, you can see by like the way that it drapes here, it's a very thin material. Um, but I do think that the 81 looks cool. So if I was gonna buy a jacket from this season, it would probably be the 81. Cause it's very, very full featured. There's a lot going for it and there's a lot going on. But yeah, it's, it's just that material is super thin. Same material, the J82, which is a long coat. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really, not feeling this so much. I don't really like long coats massively in general. Um, and yeah, this is definitely not my favorite example of that. I think there are some really cool outfits with long coats uh, for sure. But yeah, I'm I'm not really big on this one. It's got a bit of a kind of apron-like quality about it, I feel, to the front because of the way that the zip goes. It doesn't go down the front. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not massive on that one. Um, I'm not going to go through absolutely every piece, but I'll tell you something that is interesting. I'll tell you something that is exciting to me. And you guys are probably going to be like, oh, this is, uh, what's the point of buying that when it's acronym? Because you could go down anywhere and get this. But I think that this is super cool. I think it looks real comfy. The material looks really nice. Uh, it's that cash llama stuff that they've used in quite a lot of other pieces. You can really see the... Uh, the kind of, I guess it's not really articulation, but the different kind of patterning here and the different kind of panels that they've got going on. This has two like chest holster pockets as well, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> pockets, so it's tech wear. And uh, yeah, I think it looks super cozy. I think it just looks really nice as well. Um, this is no doubt going to be pretty outrageously priced. Um, but you know, we have to we have to accept that. There's no point trying to talk about price with acronym because it's just not really about that. Um, but yeah, I think this is nice. And I, I'm i kind of into, whenever Acronym do new seasons, I kind of like the more unusual stuff and the things that are a little bit different to the to what you would expect from Acronym. Because when you think Acronym, obviously you think jackets and, and pants and whatever. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a bit different to that. So this one, this one definitely appeals to me. And I've got a lot of jackets. Let's be face it. Let's be, fa let's be facing it. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of jackets. So... I'm not going to buy an acronym jacket unless it really is like something really cool or I think it's really different and just does something that nothing else does. Uh, whereas those kind of mid-layer things, I don't really have that many like high fashion knitwear or mid-layer items. So that makes it interesting uh, for me for that reason. Yeah, I heard that Velvet. So low variety but higher stock, which is not necessarily a bad thing because what was happening before is that the popular items would immediately go out of stock and then they'd never be seen again. And then you'd have all these like random, slightly weird things hanging around for ages. So like the P25, for example, those are SS19. So those have now been around for an entire year. And uh, and here they are still. Um, so yeah, just not that popular, I guess. But uh, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough, I suppose. Ah, oh, Matt Law, thank you for the, the $5 Canadian. Uh, show alternatives to acronym Gorilla Group, Stone Iron Shadow Project, or on fun levy that are one tenth of the price. Um, yeah, to be honest, I don't think you're gonna get. I don't think you're gonna get anything that's that great at, at so low as one tenth of the price. My recommendation, if you want to buy stuff like that that's much cheaper, is go down the military surplus route and then be prepared to make adjustments yourself. Because if you're trying to buy, like, if you're googling like cheap techwear stuff or whatever. I don't think you will really find anything that's particularly good. So yeah, you, you could you could easily make some mistakes there. But um, it kind of depends as well, like what specific things that you're after, because like, are there alternatives to acronym jackets that are cheaper? Um, you know, maybe you could find some Nike Lab ACG stuff that's secondhand or whatever, some of the less popular models are way, way cheaper. Um, 
On Fon Leve as well, I've occasionally seen that come up secondhand and it's been far cheaper than the new stuff. So if you keep an eye on the, the various secondhand groups, then I think for me, that's the best way of getting like the higher quality stuff or the luxury stuff at a better price rather than trying to go for like what's the cheap alternative brand. Um, but that said, I think, you know, if you're looking at like uh, even like mainstream sportswear brands like Nike or whatever, in fact, yeah, Bong Hollywood has literally just said that. Go to an outlet Nike store. Um, because Nike have like an absolutely massive product line and they do have stuff in there that is appropriate for techwear. Um, they've got a whole like, they've got, they've got like a whole collection which is called like tech or something or describe itself as tech. They've got like the tech knit stuff or whatever. Um, so yeah, there's lots of options for things like that. And you know, North Face, things like that as well. Arcteryx, a little bit more expensive. Um, but again, it's something that's potentially available on sale as well. So there are quite a few different options, but it, yeah, it really depends on what specifically you're after because I think the recommendations uh, are kind of different depending on what exactly you're after. Um, what else? What else can we look at? Um, I wish they released the J27 DS. Uh, I can't actually think what the J27 is. But yeah, I think dry skin jackets are very cool in general. I've got an Enfant Leve one, and yeah, it's like real comfy to wear, so that's nice. Uh, Rohan says, what do I think about chest bags, like the whole Ian Connor Aleeks thing? Um, I'm not massive on it. I think it can look a little bit try-hard, and I think it's a little bit played out because it was done to death in the kind of hypebeast streetwear scene in like 2018, 2019. But that said, I don't think it's like inherently bad. And I think there's definitely some things that are better than others. There's a the little Stone Island bag, actually, which is quite cool, which has, like, it's that kind of chest harness thing. But it's, like, a little oval shape, and I think it looks really cute. So that one's pretty fun. Um, yeah, I... The Alix ones are definitely not really for me. Uh, just because, yeah, they, they were kind of, like, adopted by the hype beasts, I think. And then once that happens, it's kind of over. But there's lots of cheaper, like, military-branded ones as well. I know Maharishi, actually, they've got some really cool stuff. Um, that's a lot more affordable. Um, so actually, I can give you an example of that because I've still got the link to this, if it's still in stock. Uh, ah, so this has sold out, unfortunately, but um, as a good example of like a holster or a chest bag that I think is quite cool, like have a look at this little thing. This is by Maharishi. Is it gonna give me a big picture? Can I scroll in? There we go. That's that's as big as you're getting, unfortunately. Uh, and they don't have any like pictures of it on. But yeah, it's like it's much more obviously military styled, which I think is cool. And you just got these small bags that kind of sit on the chest. Um, the price is much better as well. Those were eighty six pounds, which is not outrageous. I think Maharishi actually are quite a good choice for these smaller bags like that, because for whatever reason, I think they seem to be relatively affordably priced, like compared to some of their other stuff. Um, but yeah, they're still like pretty good quality and they're like based on military designs, which I think is quite cool. Uh, Joseph says, have I ever reached out to Errolson personally? Um, no, I have not. And I, I don't think he would probably be that interested in working with me, to be honest. <laughs> in that like, I, I feel like the, the level of kind of design and expertise and everything that goes into acronym is, is like higher than my level of knowledge currently. So, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm an enthusiast consumer at the end of the day. Um, like I don't have the, the kind of decade plus of garment creation knowledge that like Errolson, Errolson has and, and that goes into acronym products. So I feel like, not that I'm doing it a disservice, but I think there's probably more to talk about with acronym products than I can necessarily get across in my videos. Um, and yeah, I feel like I probably know more than your average person, but there are definitely other people out there that know more than I do. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Galvanize says, can I visit the Russian Techwear memes page for fun? The problem is that I won't understand any of it. And I don't think probably a lot of people aren't going to understand it because it's all going to be in Cyrillic, I guess, right? So, um, but if you've, if you've got any examples, then uh, you can link them in the chat, I guess. Um, I don't want to keep scrolling up, actually, so I'll, I'll try not to just, like, keep scrolling up and looking for questions. I'll just kind of, like, I'll just go by what's there in front of me. Um, 
how did I continue to have the motivation to pursue YouTube when it doesn't generate any revenue? It basically, it doesn't, it still doesn't really generate any profit because basically any money that I make goes back into buying either equipment. So like for this week's stream, I bought an Elgato cam link, which was like 120 quid or something. And obviously I'm not going to make 120 quid on this stream because, you know, I'm not like monetizing it. No one's paying me to do the stream or whatever, um, which is fine. But that's just kind of the way that I wanted to work it. And this is, I always really want this to be a hobby for me. So I don't want to try and like be squeezing it for like every cent that it's worth. Um, so yeah, for me, it's because it's never really been about like, oh, how can I get money? Or like money is the thing that motivates me to make these videos. It wasn't really a problem when no one was really watching them or yeah, I was only having like two or three comments on each video or like a hundred views or whatever, because I found it satisfying personally to like sit down and to create something and then to put that thing out there and be like, yeah, I worked really hard on that thing. And like now it's out there in the world and someone found it helpful or I felt that I did a good job in creating that stuff. So that was, that was what gave me the motivation at first. And because as well, like I spent a long time kind of making excuses for myself just in general. Like I spent absolutely years being like, yeah, I want to do, I want to have a YouTube channel I like I want to make videos and stuff, but oh, I just never really have the time or whatever. And I actually did. Like I made <laughs> when I was like a child, I made Animal Crossing Wild World videos by like filming my screen. And those videos now have like 30k views or something. Like this was back in the day when no one was making videos on YouTube, so everyone was like would just watch anything because there was like anything that was available, they they would just watch it. So I had such a good opportunity then, but I just didn't really want to like put the time in so uh so yeah I was I was kind of doing that for a long time and I thought you know what I'm gonna commit and I'm just gonna do it and I'm gonna do it about stuff that I like and then uh and then kind of go from there uh Matt it takes six months to a year to get profitable on YouTube I would say probably more than that for me I think it was probably about 18 months before I really felt like oh I'm actually like getting some money in and even then like it all goes straight out because I buy clothes for the channel I buy new equipment, all that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Um, what else can we look at? What's your percentage ratio in terms of function slash aesthetics? I try not to think of it in too mathematical terms, but there's definitely some pieces that I have that are very highly in the, the looks camp. Some are very highly in the functional camp. Um, and it's, it's just about, you know, it's, it's what you feel at the time. It's what you need. Sometimes I really feel like I just want to wear something that's really utilitarian that gets the job done. Sometimes I'm like, hey, I can wear something that's a little bit crazy. So the, my wardrobe in general kind of spans that whole spectrum. But yeah, just, just do it based on what you want or do it based on the day. Um, who are some of your favorite tech wear influencers? That's an interesting question. Um... I guess like for me, the people that influence me are the people that are making the cool clothes and stuff to begin with. Cause that's the thing that really appeals to me is like being able to look at these cool different clothes and like different materials and the way that they're constructed and like all this interesting stuff. That's what really like motivates me to to wanna dress better and to wanna do things differently and incorporate cool new stuff in my wardrobe. Cause I see, you know, Acronym release this new thing, like, you know, the C1AM, like that little, jumper and I'm like oh that looks really cool like this is evidently like very well constructed what can I do to make that work really well in my wardrobe and like mix things up so that's definitely a big influence um in terms of actual people um yeah I, I don't think there are that many kind of individuals that spring to mind in in terms of like I follow this person and I want to base my style around them um but just in general like I'm always looking through the community and there are there are different people at different times or different outfits that I think like yeah that's really sick like that that looks really cool like I would love to have an outfit that's like that or whatever um so yeah I, I don't don't kind of narrow it down too much or I try not to um what else can I oh thank you painful sheep that's a very that's a very nice comment thanks give us the AC fits as well <laughs> um so, so basically someone out there in YouTube has you before Techware era. Yeah, no, that's true. There are videos out there. There's a video as well of when the most recent SSX game came out on 
PS3, there's a video of me doing a tutorial on like how to play the game and to do the like trick events. And that again is like me filming my screen. I've like got the controller up to the screen being like, and then if you like press these buttons, then you'll like get bigger combos or whatever. Um, which is, is kind of funny. Throwback, big throwback. You guys will never find them though, because they're under a totally different name. So you'll never ever find that stuff. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a fun one. I did actually set up a gaming channel as well at a similar time to when I set up the Techware channel. And I did some like Let's Plays and stuff. But I just, I'm not really a gaming YouTuber. It's just not, yeah. I, I find it quite difficult to be like interesting and funny uh, when also doing that. It's kind of hard. Um, check this Techware sneaker. All right, let's have a look at this. Reebok. DMX Illusion 001 FT High. This better be good. This better be cool. All right, this is kind of weird. It's got some like retro futuristic kind of vibes. Is this going to give me a big picture? Yeah, here we go. All right, go away. We'll accept this. Um, yeah, this is a bit weird looking. It reminds me of something, but I can't think what it is. It's a little bit like 80s Transformers, isn't it? It's a bit, it's very retro. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put this one, put this one to vote. What do you guys think of this? Hands up, hands up or hands down in the chat as to, uh, as to what you're, what you're feeling about this one. I'm, uh, I don't think it's for me. I'm not a massive fan personally, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll leave it up to you guys. I do like the, the kind of this little purple section here, cause that's a little bit interesting. That's not really been done before. I don't think. But this like this toe box here being like super elongated, it looks like, is uh, is kind of odd to me. This bit's fun though as well uh, on the midsole, this little like jaggedy line bit. So there's like there's definitely some some bits that I like, and there's some other bits that I don't. This bit looks like a knockoff Yeezy 700. Those like shapes, they look very very similar to me. Uh, do I feel acronym prices are justified? Um, Justified is a very interesting question. I think they have the ability to set whatever price they want to. I think any brand has the ability to set whatever price they want to. Um, because people often forget, you know, it's it's not just about the cost of materials, for example. Because people are often like, oh, like, this brand is really expensive or whatever, and they're just making cotton hoodies or whatever. Um, yeah, materials are only a very small part of that because especially with a brand like Acronym as well, it's it's not just like they think, oh, let's make a pair of trousers and then they make them and then they sell them. They'll be doing a lot of experimentation and like what works and what doesn't work. And all of that is time that has to be accounted for and has to be paid for. And it's a, it's a luxury brand at the end of the day. Things are made in very small quantities. Things are made to a very high standard for the most part, although there, there have been kind of issues with things before. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a luxury brand, luxury brand, luxury price. That's just kind of the way it works. Um, is it kind of, is it worth the money in the, you know, is an acronym pair of pants like 10 times better objectively than a 100 pair of, uh, 100 pound pair of trousers? No, probably not. Cause you get like diminishing returns, but yeah, they, they are some of the best pieces in this space on the market. So they command the highest price for that reason. It's just a, uh, it's just how it works. Hey, v Velchko? Is that how you say your name? I don't know. But how's it going? Um, have I seen the stuff from Neuro Studio? Yeah, I, that rings a bell, actually. Um, I feel like, are they the guys that did kind of like, sort of like body mapped 3D stuff, I think, which sounded quite interesting. And yeah, it seems like one of those brands that's just going to tease things forever and then never actually release anything. But yeah, if I remember, they were... Um, they were quite interesting. Uh, if I would sell all my clothes, I could afford, afford to retire right away. I don't know about that, but yeah, over over the years, I've definitely spent more than your average person probably should on clothing. But then that's kind of the benefit of this channel, and that's partly why I like doing this stuff, because you know I get some revenue from this channel, and then I can put it straight back into buying more stuff and buying more things than like what an average person would do. And I'm not trying to say that and I kind of like, oh, I get to wear more clothes than other people, like aren't I great? But it's just because I like looking at all this stuff and I like reviewing it and I like looking at it in detail. So the, the greater ability I have to like get new things in and try out different stuff, even if maybe I'm not actually gonna wear it that much. Cause like I've got, you know, you can see back there, I've got a lot of jackets now 
if I buy another jacket, how much am I going to wear it when I've got like another 30 back there? Not very much, but it's not about that to me. It's not, it's not about the cost per wear anymore. It's just about checking out things that I think are interesting and I think are cool and kind of speak to me. So, yeah. Uh, do I have... Oh, the chat has just totally jumped around, but I was halfway through reading something. Um, oh, and I missed, a, I missed a, a super chat post, so thank you, Java, for that. Uh, what do you think meshing rivet head industrial clothing style with tech wear that's not too cos cosplay-ish? Um, that, that's slightly confusingly worded. Rivet head industrial clothing style with tech wear that's not too cosplay. -ish. Um, is that like, is rivet head industrial clothing, does that like refer to something specific? I don't know. But I, in terms of like, if by industrial clothing you mean more like workwear kind of stuff, then yeah, absolutely. There's, there's no reason why not. Like tech wear at the end of the day is about dressing in an appropriate fashion for your environment. And if you're in such a place where like industrial worker kind of clothing is important or useful, then yeah, absolutely incorporate that into your stuff. Um, and yeah, I see no reason why that can't work. Uh, but yeah, thank you for your, for your little question. And I wish that they were a little bit more visible to me in this chat, because um, that one almost got lost there, but I do appreciate it nonetheless. What's the best game that has tech wear in it? Um, thank you, Cleaver Slips. Uh, yeah, good question. Um, probably, probably Deus Ex takes the cake purely because of the acronym integration. So. If you guys don't know about that, in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, I think, there is an actual acronym jacket that was designed by Errolson Hugh, and there's like an email in the game uh, that's from Errolson being like, oh, hope you like the new jacket, Adam Jensen. And uh, and yeah, there's some like, some kind of interplay between the two brands there. So obviously that one uh, gets a big vote. Uh, but there's a couple of games that have got like some cyberpunky inspired stuff. And I'm looking forward to cyberpunk actually, because that's definitely going to have some cool fashion in there. Um, Death Stranding as well, that had the acronym CP2 in there, and uh, yeah, in general the clothing is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, there's some there's some good options for techwear gaming. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Jürgen says this looks Frankenstein as hell with the uh, with the shoes. Yeah, definitely mixed opinions on the on the shoes. I think mostly negative. Um, you have an unpronounceable name. Fish, Catrix, one, two, three, four. Uh, you got too many numbers in there. Uh, how did I get into techwear? I got into techwear from seeing people in like streetwear or fashion Facebook groups, just like posting outfits. And I saw techwear stuff being posted for the first time and I thought it looked super cool. Um, it was people like, in fact, uh, let's have a little bit of a look now. So I'll tell you, tell you the original inspo was our good friend Jail. Um, so yeah, the Jail was probably like the first person that I saw posting techwear outfits. And it would have been, if we scroll down far enough, then we'll probably see like, yeah, so like this iconic, iconic images back here. So like it's stuff like this, I remember back in the day being like, yo, that is so sick. Yeah, that was back in December, 2016. So that was like over four years ago now. I remember, yeah, like having, I've never seen a jacket that's anything like that before. Like it looks so complex and so cool. And like these acronym shoes as well. Like, I, I didn't even know what acronym was at this stage and, and he had to say what it was. And then I was like, oh, because I found out that they were like a thousand pounds or whatever. And I was like, I'm never going to buy any acronym. Um, but here we are four years later. So uh, it's uh, funny how things change. And yeah, he's, he's got quite a cool, uh, quite a cool kind of style as well. So yeah, he was, he was like one of the big reasons why I originally got into tech guy. Um, and now we play Apex Legends together sometimes. So uh, shout out, Jail. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to stop the chat jumping around when I scroll, but it's just it just happens. ACG Cargos versus Right Division two pocket pants. Um, I prefer. I personally prefer the four pocket pants of the Right Division ones. Those are those are the, the pants from Right Division now that I wear. I don't really wear that much other stuff from them, but yeah, those ones have kind of stood the test of time. Um, I don't know about the non Nike Lab ACG cargos. I've I kind of heard mixed opinions of them. They're not really very uh, sort of futuristic, I suppose. Um, they're probably a better product overall. They're probably a better quality item. 
so it kind of depends whether you whether you prefer the look of the right division stuff or whether you'd rather like a, a higher quality garment um kind of depends on your style as well because i think they've got slightly different cuts i think the two pocket pants are a bit more tapered and the cargoes are a bit straighter uh carry more japan interesting okay i hadn't heard of that so yeah thank you for the recommendation there you know what i'm gonna gonna make a little note to myself there always on the lookout for uh for interesting cool brands so thank you for that one uh yeah acronym is like the ferrari of clothes yeah they can do what they want and charge what they want yeah i think that's pretty true to an extent there's not really a direct equivalent of acronym so you know when you're at the top you charge that that extra thing uh i don't own a pair of sketches unfortunately six but um yeah big big tag wear inspo coming from sketches for sure but no, I don't own any sketch issues. The The last thing that I think about, well, the first thing I think about with sketches is them, they did that, like, disgusting Yeezy knockoff. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but absolutely gross. Uh, we're going to have a look at these. We have to We have to destroy our brains. Look at that. That is absolutely heinous. That is disgusting. Don't, please don't buy those. Please never, ever buy those. I mean, yeah, <laughs> terrible. Like, I, like, A, how are they not being sued for that? And B, as a company, how do you have the balls to, like, rip off someone else so blatantly and just be like, yeah, this is a fine product that our brand can put out. Like, come on, have some some integrity, I guess. Like, it's just awful. Ugh. Uh, anyway, I got distracted then. Uh, yeah, have I tried any Hoka One shoes? I have not, but I would very much like to. I think the Tor Ultra Highs look really nice, and they come in this really cool, like, olivey, sandy kind of color. Um, I feel like my issue is that I don't have that many green pants that would look that great with them, but I would definitely be up for getting a pair at some point and reviewing them. So, yeah, that's that's going to be one that's on the cards for sure. It's kind of, it's on the list. Like, BBS Salomons at the top, as soon as I find a pair in my size, which never seems to happen. Um, Hoka One Ones as well uh what else those are like the big ones for me i wouldn't mind a pair of acronym presto lavas that's for sure i almost bought some but the exchange rate was really bad so i decided not to uh but yeah i'm, I'm i still think those are cool so yeah uh any plans to revisit the gray gray man aesthetic um yeah i agree it's it's definitely the best way of doing tech well without drawing attention to yourself that's kind of what the gray man ethos is all about um yeah i like uh, my style kind of varies and sometimes I do dress in that more low-key kind of way. Like if you're just wearing a pair of like technical pants that aren't cargoes, something like the, the Outlier Ecstasy in the Rain. Uh, uh, yeah, that one, there we go. Um, so yeah, like this for example, this is very much like a Grey Man-esque product. Um, and yeah, I've, I've got one of these. I think it's really nice, but it doesn't draw too much attention to itself by itself. You know, like if you see someone wearing this outfit out in the street, you're going to be like, oh, that guy's dressed in tag wear. Like, no, you're probably not. But it's like a good technical performance gear from head to toe. So yeah, that's uh, that's some, some cool stuff for sure. Um, and yeah, sometimes I like dressing in that way. Would I revisit it like officially in videos? Yeah, maybe. Could do a kind of like, gray man outfits type thing or maybe something that compares more the the kind of more overt like crazy acronym whatever tech ninja style versus the gray man stuff some kind of like comparative bits or maybe how like one can transition to the other because if you wear like the acronym p10s for example the non-cargo versions and a really plain jacket then that's definitely much more in the gray man camp but then you know you swap that out for the cargo version you swap that out for a bit more like crazy looking jacket or whatever then suddenly you're over there on the on the other camp a6 fuji trabico um i have seen those before and i think they're pretty cool i think the there are two models that i like uh I can't remember one of them, but yeah, the the, tra the Fuji Trabico is one of the other ones. Um, yeah, I think they're quite cool. I like those. Um, okay, so Riverhead Industrial means more like Cybergoth. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's no reason why you can't mix like any kind of 
styles together, really, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I think you'd have to be careful, for sure, especially with Cybergoth stuff, because I think it has a bit of a bad reputation associated with it. But I think you could definitely reinvent that kind of style, for sure, and do things in a slightly different way. Like, there are some techwear brands that are out there that are using, like, neon colours and that kind of thing. And there are lots of wide pants that are available, which is very much the Cybergoth style. So I'd say, rather than... Rather than like incorporating cyber goth clothing into techwear clothing, I would maybe look for those techwear products that speak to you more on that level on like, yeah, the, the kind of the width of the pants or using those wilder colors and then incorporating that into your style rather than looking from the other perspective. I think that would probably be the way to do it. And that would give a very, uh, it would give like a different and a more modern twist rather than looking costumey. Um, yes, definitely checked out 11 by BBS before. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I literally looked through every retailer in the EU that stocks BBS because I want to buy a pair of BBS sneakers and they just don't seem to have them in my size. Um, I need a UK 11.5, I think. Um, and I really want, in fact, let's have a, have a quick look. So the ones that I really want are the, uh, what are they called? They're Bamba 5s, but they're like a grey object dyed ones. Yeah, so like these ones here. I think these are sick. And I know a lot of people, for a lot of people... Oh, this doesn't work. Um, can I scroll in on these a little bit? Yeah, so for a lot of people, um, it's the, the Bamba 2s and the Bamba 3s are like the really popular ones. Um, but yeah, I think the 5s are really cool. Because um, they look more like a regular Salomon shoe to me. And I think they probably fit in my water a bit better. But yeah, I just, I love the, the object dyed stuff. I think it looks sick. Big fan of that. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this live stream brought to you by the Coca-Cola Corporation. Uh, I'm on number two of these. This is going to be my last one. My last 150 mil fix. Um... Can I do videos about summer techwear, says Oliver. And, uh, and thank you for the compliment, it's much appreciated. Um, yeah, now that we start moving into spring summer, there's definitely gonna be some more summer-based content out there, whether that be reviews of lighter weight things, whether that be, um, yeah, like another kind of generic outfit video, I suppose. Yeah, there's gonna be more, more summer-based content going out there, absolutely, for sure. Uh, I can say that with certainty. What's my biggest regret purchase? I don't know. There's been a lot. Um, what have I got back there that I can show? Uh, oh, actually, actually, I'm going to show you guys something that I've not shown before. So hang on. Let me, uh, can I go to the webcam? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to have a look at something different. And it's these. And it's what's in this box here. So. There's a reason that these appeared on my shelf one day and I never ever talked about them. And the reason for that is that they are fucking tragic. So these are the Nike Maharishi collabs that they did. They're Nike by you. So they're like custom ones. And on the website you get to pick, you know, all your colors, all your different bits. Um, and then they will ship you the finished shoe based on your design. So... <laughs> I'm like, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to show these, right? Because I think that they're pretty trash. But this is what I ended up making. So I made a pair of Air Force One highs and uh, I did them in black and olive and I did them with what I thought at the time would be like a cool embroidered swoosh down here. Um, but yeah, these are in, in person, these are just nothing like what they looked like when I designed them on the website. And yeah, they're just, they're just not right. Like this, this swoosh here, this was supposed to be black embroidery. That's what it looked like on the website at least. So I thought it was gonna be like, the swoosh here would be like barely visible and then it would come into view here on the olive panel. Uh, but it's not, it's like this gray color and it looks shit. It's just not right at all. I also, I don't know why I bought Air Force One highs because I don't particularly like this model. They also had the bow fins and they had the Air Force One utilities as well. And at the time I didn't really like the utilities at all, but I think in retrospect, I think I probably should have gone with those. I would have ended up wearing those. 
So yeah, these have never ever been worn. And uh, yeah, they're also kind of big for me as well. I bought these in a UK 11. They probably should have been a 10.5. Um, but yeah, so like in, in their credit, I do like some of these details, you know, like you've got this little kind of gold crossed out bit here, which is quite nice if the camera wants to focus, which it clearly doesn't. Can I, can I do that? Does that work? Yeah, there we go. It's because of the face detect. It just wants to focus on my face. So yeah, it's got this little bit. Like the embroidery does actually look cool from like a design perspective. It's just the color is totally wrong. It's got this little lace tip here, which is nice. You know, it's got little details and you know, it's got the cool gold bit on the back, like different materials used as well. So there's a lot to like about it. It's just, yeah, it just did not go well. Did not go well for me at all. Um, yeah, so yeah, I got the pronunciation wrong on on them. Yeah, Hoka One One or One One, one of the two. Uh, yeah, it's a slack as well on the hunt for the the big size banders, for sure. Um. <laughs> yeah, every, everyone cry with me, cry with me about the issues. What am I gonna do with them? I mean, I've had these for I don't know, like six months. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do with them. I'm gonna put them back in their box. I'm gonna put them back on their shelf and I'm never ever gonna get them out again because like I can't sell these really because who would want them? Um, I'm not gonna wear them because I don't really like them. Um, so yeah, what else am I gonna do? So they're, they're on there as a kind of memory, I suppose, to warn me from buying dumb shit ever again. And uh, I can't even close the box properly now. No, that ain't happening. All right, I'm just going to put them down there. Put them down there and forget all about them. So yeah, that's my, that's my regretful purchase. And I thought about including them in a video. Uh, but then, yeah, I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. I have nothing good to say. So I'm just going just gonna to not bother. Yeah. Sean says the shower curtain jacket. So I'll show you the one that he means by that. This is not a regretful... Well... I don't super regret this, but I'll show you that. Uh, let me just, there we go. So. So we come into view now? Yeah, here we go. So this, this is a Y3 poncho. Uh, well, actually, no, it's not a poncho. It's described as a poncho jacket. Let me just switch this around a little bit. And then you guys can see. So hopefully you can still hear me okay. But yeah, this is a... Uh, I bought this poncho jacket. This retailed at £800, believe it or not. And uh, have I worn this a lot? No, I've barely ever worn it. Um, however, I do not regret this. Anything like some of the other stuff that I've purchased. And, and stuff that I've worn more than this. Because I just think that this is a super cool piece. And I'm, I'm really glad that I own it. Even though I don't wear it that much. Because I just think, yeah, it's this like sailcloth material. It's really soft. It's really flowy. It just, yeah, it's it's really, it's a really, really cool piece. Um, yeah, so I, I think I think there's a lot to like about it. And I think just from a, yeah, as I said earlier, like part of the, so I put that back up there. Let me just do that. Yeah. It's like part of the reason that I do this stuff is because I like checking out like these crazy different things that that like a normal consumer would never normally do so yeah would i recommend that any average person buys that jacket thing like absolutely not um yeah 800 pounds it looks absolutely ridiculous it's crazy um but i'm really glad that i got to have a look at it and like to try it on up close and and to, to now own it um yeah i think it's great so i don't don't regret that but yeah there's definitely other things i also regret You can only get away wearing that in Japan. Yeah, like any any normal place, you can probably not not go wearing that. Um, yeah, I'm glad you guys actually like it. Yeah, I'm glad you guys like it because I think it's really cool. Even though, yeah, the, the cost per wear is pretty bad. Um, I'm not going to give away those Nike shoes because like I don't want to give something away because I don't like it. That's stupid. I want to give something away that I like, that I think is cool. That I think other people should also experience. If I give something away that's like, I hate this and I think it sucks, then yeah, what am I saying to you guys? I'm like, you guys deserve my terrible things I don't want. I would much rather 
buy something that I think is sick and buy two of them and then do one as a giveaway. So maybe I'll have to do that sometime. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's more chance of that happening than me giving those shoes away, that's for sure. I don't want to inflict them on you guys. Yeah, greatest hits of my regretful purchases. I think that would that would be a, a decent video, to be fair, because there's quite a few things that I've purchased over the years and then barely ever worn or my style has changed or, yeah, have, have just been terrible purchases in retrospect. Would I consider making a store of stuff that I don't wear? So I sold probably 20 things recently on John Flip. Um, which is a uh, second-hand marketplace, which I'll tell you what, we can have a look at. We can give those guys some exposure. Um, so we have a quick look at this. So it's a, it's a marketplace. It's kind of like Grailed. Um, I actually haven't been on here for absolutely ages, so I'm sorry if anyone has messaged me and I've not responded. Um, my apologies for that. But, uh, yeah, they have a bunch of different things. John Flip has, like, a bit more of a techwear focus, than a lot of other sites. So you'll notice, for example, like some of the top things, like this is, uh, yeah, sorted by newest. So we've got Dispatch, we've got Nike ACG, we've got Acronym, we've got Nike, we've got Mission Workshop. Like there's a load of cool things here, Salomon as well, more Acronym stuff. Um, so I definitely recommend having a look through here for some techwear gear for sure. Um, but anyway, I listed like 20 plus items on here uh, a month or two ago. Um, and I've still got a bunch of random things that are for sale actually. Um, Oh yeah, 17, 17 things. So yeah, I got rid of quite a lot of things and the, if I switch the camera very quickly to, oh no, you can't see it. But I have a trunk that's down there that has a bunch more things in. So I've got quite a lot of things um, that I can potentially sell. I kind of want to wait a little bit until the whole like, mm, the whole coronavirus situation is like a little bit of a problem. Um, oh yeah, I'm still, <laughs> my bad, right. Apologies for that. Uh, let's go back to there. Yeah, there we go. So that was my profile anyway. And to, to re-show you guys, thank you for letting me know. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's techwear based stuff. A lot of it that's on there. It's a lot more, um, on that side of things, uh, for sure. And yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Um, Ilya says, where did I get my shelf? Uh, everything is Ikea in the background. Yeah, that, uh, the big white thing is like a modular shelf. So you can just buy the bits that you want and then you just kind of put them all together. So that works pretty well. Um, have I decided what I want to pick up from Neman? Um, I would absolutely love the new Zephyr jacket. Um, in fact, I, I don't know if the ne uh, Neman website works for me still. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try... Do this. Yeah, like for some reason the Neman website does not work on my PC at all. Uh, I don't know why. It's, it's like purely my connection. But yeah, it never ever works, which is really weird. But anyway. Um, yeah, the, the Zephyr jacket I think is absolutely sick. Um, so yeah, have a look at this bad boy. Yeah, I think that's great. I absolutely love it. I think the, the garment dyeing is really cool. I think the colors really interesting. Um, it's a shame that it's so expensive. This retails at like a thousand euros or something, which is pretty mad. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's a big shame, but I think to be honest, I think, here we go. Oh no, that's not the right link. Um, I think Hypebeast did a lookbook somewhere. It'll be this one here. I reckon this link, but yeah, I think pretty much every look that's in here I think is really really strong I think almost every piece from this collection is really cool so yeah this season in particular I've, I've been like a real fan of how this stuff is looking so yeah I think the pants look really good all these different garment dye jackets and stuff look great I think that color of the Zephyr jacket as well is really nice like this one as well just yeah great colors everything's looking super cool this pink one as well I also think looks sick um, that bomber jacket is also very nice. Yeah, I, I realize I'm just kind of saying the same thing over and over again. Like, this is nice, this is nice, this is nice. But yeah, I think this is uh, this is some great stuff, for sure. Um, I actually, I really like these trousers as well. I think they're a great color. Um, and they work really nicely with the, the kind of lighter garment dyed stuff. Uh, aside from YouTube, what other job do I have? Yeah, so this, this doesn't, as I said earlier, this doesn't really make 
any profit. So my main job is I work in social media for a tech company. So um, yeah, I, I tweet about laptops and things like that. I'm social media manager is my official title. Um, so yeah, it pays the bills. It's uh, yeah, it's it's all good in that regard. But yeah, that's um, that's my I would say nine to five, but I work eight to five. So yeah, that's that's my eight to five. Are graphics on clothes cool or played out? I don't think graphics are inherently bad, for sure. Um, I think there's a, there's a bit of a stereotype of like people wearing graphic tees, you know, with like their big dad core cargo shorts on and not looking particularly fashionable. But I think there's, you know, there's, there's cool graphic tees out there. Like, I think, you know, you take this outfit here, for example, like, does that look uncool or played out or whatever? No, I don't think so. I think it looks, I think it looks quite good like that. Um, and yeah, I think there's loads of examples like that. Um, yeah, there's, there's loads of brands as well that do cool graphic tees and stuff. You know, even like um, Stone Island Shadow Project. Um, you know, they've got loads of cool graphic things, both from tees, they've got like bomber jackets with graphic prints on as well, right the way through to, uh, you know, like the, the like purple jacket back there. I know it's not a shadow project, but that almost has a graphic printed on it, the, the kind of level of detail. Um, yeah, so I, I used to work for Azus. I don't work for them anymore. I work for Dell now, Dell and Alienware. So uh, yeah, a little bit different, but still within the same industry. Uh, what do I think about Lululemon? I have not bought anything from them until a couple of days ago. I bought a pair of shorts. They were like 50 quid or something. And I wear them for running and I think they're real nice. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, it's a shame that they, I, I think the name is a bit of a shame to be honest, because I think it makes it sound like it's exclusively for women, but it's not. They've got loads of men's clothes as well. Um, and they have in the past had some quite interesting jackets and stuff as well. So yeah, I, I have nothing bad to say about the brand. I'd definitely consider picking up more stuff from them in the future. Um, Matthew, the, I got into my first social media job literally because they posted it on Facebook. The Azus Facebook page were like, do you live near this location and you, you know, want a job in social media? Like you should apply to this LinkedIn page. And I was like, sick, that sounds like me. So <clears throat> yeah, I literally applied and ended up getting the job because of that. And then from there, it's basically been uh, kind of industry connections and networking and stuff like that that just gets you where you want to go. So um, yeah, I guess kind of luck a little bit, but also just being open and looking around every possible place. A lot of jobs go up on LinkedIn as well, of course. So that's always a good place to look. But just keep an eye on your favorite brands, basically. And you can always put in speculative applications as well. If there's a brand that you think is really, really cool or interesting, you can email them and be like, look, maybe you're not hiring right now, but I really like your brand. I would really like to work for them. So there you go. Um, and you never know, you might be successful. Um, what can I, uh, what can I say about Vapermax Flyknit Gator ISPA? Uh, let's have a look at those. Uh, ISPA Gator Gator. Let's see what these are like. Oh yeah, these are like the super weird ones. Um, yeah, so these, this picture illustrates it way better. They're like a regular pair of, uh, what are they called? Vapermaxes. Flyknit Vapermaxes. And they've got this like crazy boot thing that goes over the top. I'm not a big fan of how these look. Uh, yeah, I'm not not super feeling that. I think the concept is great of having like a regular pair of shoes and then you can modify them into a totally different form. But I just think the execution is not that great. Actually, the, the silvery white ones are quite cool. These are like space boots. I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely more about those. I don't think I've seen that color before. So those ones are fun. I quite like that. But yeah, ISPA, almost always heavily over-designed clothing. And uh, that doesn't seem to be much of an exception there. But yeah, I, I, I do think they're interesting. And as I say, great concept. And concepts are something that I think is cool and interesting. Uh, what happened to my Jordan 1s? That's very old. It's been a long time since I've done anything about those. Uh, I put them in a box somewhere. And I got them out not that long ago. And they have this like reflective coating on and that reflective coating is starting to come away. So it's like degrading a little bit, even though they've just been stored in a cool dry box, which is a bit weird. So that kind of sucks. Um, 
So yeah, I would be careful of those. If you own the Jordan 1 All-Stars, then uh, be warned that that like shiny paint might kind of come off a bit. But I think they're really cool. I think they're a great looking shoe. And for me, Jordan 1s are like the best of the Jordans. Uh, do I watch anime? Yes, I do. I do watch anime. I'm a little bit basic when it comes to anime, I'm not going to lie. Um, I've been watching Castlevania recently, which is pretty cool. Uh, I want to watch Devilman Crybaby. I watched like the first couple of episodes of that. Um, I've watched quite a few other, you know, I've watched loads of like Studio Ghibli films and stuff like that. I watched Attack on Titan, uh, a few other things. Um, but yeah, there's loads of those are cool anime out there. And there's a load of really cringy anime as well. So you want to try and get the balance right, don't you, between, uh, between those two things. Yeah, Lulu, I am glad you guys like the look of Lulu Lemon as well. And you've got some good things to say. Uh, and yeah, Lululemon, <laughs> Lululemon Lab. Um, that is where some of the cool stuff is at. So I'd recommend having a look there for sure. Um, in terms of trading acronym prestos, that's going to be tricky, I reckon. Um, best place will probably be the Techware or the acronym Facebook group. That's probably the best place. But yeah, I don't think there's going to be that many people who also want to swap sizes. So you might just have to buy the right size pair and then sell them, which kind of sucks. But that might just be uh, that might just be the way. Um, where do I recommend a shorter, stockier guy gets his jacket? Uh, that's a good question. I think a brand like Gorilla Group, um, or any brand really that does a kind of wider cut. So yeah, Gor uh, Gorilla Group, for me, they're probably a good choice because they have their kind of jackets are like this shape. They're kind of like an A shape, so they just kind of come outwards as the jacket goes down. Um, and being a Taiwanese brand, um, Taiwanese people are not as short as mainland Chinese, I don't think, from memory. They're a little bit taller, um, but a little bit shorter than your average American. So uh, they're kind of cut for that. Um, me, of course, being like significantly above average height means they're not always so great for me, but there you go. Um, things like the deploy jacket as well, I think because they have quite a wide cut, they might be uh, better suited to you. Uh, cav amps as well their things tend to be cut quite short um, yeah there's quite a few different options to be honest um, i just recommend trying out different things and different brands and finding out what kind of suits you best because um, it's not something yeah i'm kind of like very tall and, and slim to regular sort of build so it's quite difficult for me to give recommendations on what looks flattering because uh, i don't have the direct experience but yeah some of those brands are probably not bad shouts uh, graphene clothes, futuristic or stupid? Probably a bit of both. <laughs> Does anyone need to wear graphene? Probably not. Um, but anything that's like cool and interesting new technology is, yeah, worth exploring, I suppose. Uh, did someone just say, someone said Gorilla Group has new products too. I do want to check that out, Hermano. Let's check that out right now. Um, the last I checked, they didn't have that much. Yeah, they got a couple of new bits. One or two new bits. What should we have a look at? What have we got here? Um, yeah, so this is like these eight here. These are their SS20 things. So it's by all means not a full set. I'm always, I always think things like this are kind of fun and cool. I've got the Nike Lab ACG equivalent to this. It's, it's not super wearable. Uh, they are a little bit kind of crazy looking, but I think it's fun that things like this exist. Although it looks a bit, go away. Um, with the face mask a bit off, it does look a little bit like a kind of medieval peasant hat with the things coming down there, which is kind of funny. But I think it's quite cool nonetheless. I did actually really like the this shirt. I think this looks great. Let's have a look at this. Like this, yeah, this like print that's on the front here. Not really seen that in many other places. Very, very different to the, the other similar brands that are out there. But yeah, really, really cool feels yeah it feels like a very unique piece of clothing which which really appeals to me i don't know if that cut will suit me because it looks quite wide and all of my shirts are cut quite slim um so yeah i don't know if it's the one for me but yeah i think that looks really cool so i'm a big fan of that uh i am nocturnal what do i say about their clothes i say i am nocturnal is bad uh let's have a look <clears throat> So, um, this is one of these, I don't know why I'm like giving these guys exposure either. This is one of these brands that just resell stuff off Taobao basically. So 
If you look at these pictures, these are all the same products and product pictures that you will see if you go on Taobao and you search for like TechWare stuff, but they're marked up quite a lot here. So if you buy something like this directly from Taobao, it's probably like half this price. Um, but these guys just like give it a different name and they put some, yeah, different payment options or whatever. Uh, and then they charge higher prices. So none of this stuff is like particularly good quality or particularly technical really, which is fine. It doesn't have to be, but they're not like super cheap product either. So I feel like it's quite easy to, to get burned basically buying some of this stuff because you can quite easily end up with a not particularly well-made product and uh, end up spending uh, over the odds for it. Um, please say TWVMPLP for Russian techware community. Well, I've said it. I don't know what it means. I really hope it's not something awful. But uh, yeah, there you go. Um, how old am I? That's a good question. I am, I'm old. 27? 27. Ugh. Cool masks against SARS slash coronavirus. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't want to speak too much about stuff like that because I know that there's kind of specifications that do and don't help like block that and provide any genuine protection so i don't want to be like oh yeah get a cool one from gorilla group or whatever because like it's probably not going to help you so uh yeah I'm, I'm not sure to be honest on that one uh do i know uh all right let me let me search this rain delusion thing but probably if it's the thing that i think it is ooh, uh, is this going to come up with the right thing Oh, that was quite interesting, actually. I've I don't know any alternatives to that. If that's the the thing that you noted, I'll tell you what. Actually, in terms of, I actually I actually think this is quite cool looking. Uh, I can't speak to the quality, obviously, and yeah, my experience with Rain Delusion was kind of middling, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think this kind of like hood with the face mask thing. If you have a look at the Arctex. Striker hoodie. This is a not dissimilar version of that. So if you look at the black one, yeah, it's got this kind of built-in gator hood type thing. So if there's model pics with it on, see if this guy's going to show us. Come on, pull it over your face. Yeah, there's a good man. Yeah, there you go. Check that out. So yeah, I think that's that's kind of like the the cool and better quality implementation of that kind of idea of having the high neck and I think having it go over the head as well that's going to keep it in place a lot better because if you've just got a neck and you're pulling the neck up high it's probably just going to like slip down again so it will look great in pictures but then when you actually try and wear it it's not going to look that great uh, and yeah the the Gorilla Group face mask that comes free with orders that is true uh, check out Sakura from Russia yeah I have a couple of Sakura bags um, I think uh, like relative to the price they're pretty decent to be honest um, I think the one that I had was like $40 or something like that and it seemed like a decent little bag and you know they they make small bags with that tech wear kind of styling so yeah I have no complaints with them I think they're quite cool uh, Night Squire says how tall am I and what size P23s did I get so let's have a look at the P23 outfit uh, to give you some uh, kind of visual stimulus we can get our our friend off the screen there you go walk away don't know why this is being a bit slow all of a sudden are we ever gonna load we just don't know wow this really is being slow isn't it what's the deal here am i am i even still live has this gone down no everything's fine so I don't know why this isn't loading. But anyway, um, to answer that question, I'm about 6'1", 6'2". I got size L P23s. I think, to be honest, XL would have been better. They are just about okay in terms of length. Um, the person that I bought them from was six foot. So I'm a couple of inches taller, and I do think that that makes a difference in that case. Um, the P30s that I've got are XL, and I think the length on those is better. 
So yeah, I'd say if you're my height, if you're about 6'2", then XL on the acronym stuff is probably the way to go. But yeah, when Instagram decides to actually load, then I'll, uh, I'll show you. Um, what else have we got? Some things like Maharishi. Is that is that a question or a response to something else? I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, I think there might be quite a big stream delay, uh, to be honest. So I can only apologize if I respond really late to stuff. Um, yeah, I, I didn't have the option after I gone live to change the stream delay. So that's a bit of a shame. But uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. RIP Chrome. Right. I thought you were saying that the stream had gone down for a sec. I was like, oh, really? That's not good. Um, but no, we're fine. We're all good. So, uh, yeah, maybe this will work one day. But until then, we'll just uh, we'll just talk about some other stuff. Yeah. So Damien says I got the Stephen cargos and the zipper on the leg broke on the first wear. Yeah, not exactly a glowing recommendation, but that doesn't surprise me, honestly. So I'm sorry that that you felt that and that that was your uh, your experience. But yeah, the the those kinds of brands, the kind of affordable techwear stuff, is yeah from a quality perspective not always that great. And I think that was something that I noted um, back when I did look at that stuff. Um, what else have we got? Uh, do I have plans to do a Taobao haul? Yeah, so. <clears throat> I did hint at that in the comment section for videos. The reason was, was that I was, well, I have have in the past spoken to a couple of different brands around that kind of space. So in Shadow was one, and we were going to do a kind of like in Shadow a Hall type thing. And then the, the communication just kind of broke down there a little bit. So we ended up not doing anything. Um, and to be honest, now it's it's kind of difficult for me because if, if I'm spending money on, on like Taobao stuff, I know that I'm not going to wear it because I've got, you know, I'm fortunate enough now to have quite a few things that are higher quality and are that a little bit nicer. So even the good Taobao stuff, it's probably not going to be that great. And I'm probably not going to want to wear it ever. So I could either spend money doing this like Taobao haul video and then having stuff that I don't want, or I spend money buying like some, some really interesting, some cool, like more luxury stuff that maybe is more innovative or doing things differently. And then I can actually wear that afterwards. So that's kind of the reason that I ended up never actually doing it. I'm not totally against the idea, but I also think as well, they're probably not the best things to go for. If you're looking at affordable tech quest stuff, I think there probably are better options. So yeah, if I was gonna do more affordable tech quest stuff, it would be more on the, yeah, buying things secondhand, buying things from the like surplus military retailers because um, I think that jacket that I bought, that Helican one, uh, which in fact now that this is loaded, so the one in this, why is this so slow? What is going on here? Madness. Like, is Instagram down or something? Is it just me? Because like the stream seems to be fine, right? So anyway, you can see the thumbnail. So that jacket I think is actually really cool. Um, but yeah, the so that, that picture there, that's of the P23s. Um, and you can see there, they look okay on the length, but I've sagged them quite a lot. So yeah, they're, they're kind of just about all right. Whereas that's the P30 in that picture. And, uh, and I think they're much more appropriate. Uh, Night Squire says, have I ever bought any fake techwear stuff? No, fortunately I have never been scammed. I don't buy secondhand stuff very often. So I haven't had that much opportunity to, but no, I've never bought anything fake. I would actually be interested in intentionally buying something fake and then doing like a comparison. So I was thinking maybe the... Um, like the, the ACG Alpine jacket, which I've worn quite a lot. I've got quite a lot of experience with. So I'd be interested to see the difference between like the real and the fake and kind of as a means of educating you guys as well because some stuff like that is faked quite often and there are some things that are similar between different fake products. So there's stuff like zips and like the way that the, the Gore-Tex backing looks can often be different between real things and fake things. Um... What did I study in college? So in, in the UK, it was university rather than college, but I studied English literature. So I'm a very well-read kind of person. I don't really read very much now though, unfortunately. So uh, that kind of killed that for me. But yeah, I, I didn't do anything fashion related at all. And in fact, I wasn't really, I didn't have that much of an active interest in fashion until uh, after I got my first job out of uni, to be honest. So for a lot of time, I was never that actively interested, especially in the high fashion stuff. 
Uh, what do I use on my hair? That's a good question. I can't actually remember. Um, I realize that's not very helpful. It comes in like a tube. It kind of looks like a tube of toothpaste, but it's not. Oh, what is it called? It might be like a L'Oreal professional thing. I'm not sure. I get it at my hairdressers. I really should know what it is. Uh, if I remember, then I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, do people in my office watch or know about my videos? Yeah, they do know about my videos. Um, because I think someone asked once, like, what I do in my spare time or something. I very much doubt anyone watches my videos, though. Um, they're, they're not really that kind of type. A lot of the people in my team are quite a bit older than me. And uh, yeah, they're very much at like a different stage of life. Like a lot of them have kids and all that sort of thing. So they're probably not watching Techway YouTube videos. Maybe they are, maybe there are. So uh, anyone in the marketing team watching the stream, then uh, hello to you. <clears throat> uh, is Antoine the actual spelling or a stylized one? Yeah, because uh, yeah, the, the name Antoine is a French name and yeah, spelt differently. So I don't know, to be honest, why I, I started using Antoine like that. So I think in the US, Antoine with that spelling is more popular because I've definitely seen other Antoines that exist. Uh, but yeah, I, I just made it up. It's not my real name. So yeah. Um, what else? Hey Chaz, how's it going? How are you doing? Um, any good fabric sources? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really part of the the DIY scene my DIY skills are not very good so I, I can't make much of a recommendation there I'm afraid um, when I think about Alpha Tori let's see if this is gonna load yeah there we go this works fine so what's the deal with Instagram let me close this tab and open it again so it works. oh okay so it was just it was just gone for a second uh, and you get to see uh, you get to see pictures of girls so what was I going to show? Oh yeah, so what I was going to show was, oh, this is now not going to load. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so P23s, that is what a size L P23 looks like on someone that is six foot two. So these are pulled down quite low. Um, but yeah, I think they're just about okay. But I do wish that they're a little bit longer. Because um, you can see in this picture, I've got them up were a little bit higher. Yeah, I definitely think it's an Instagram thing because this is now loading really slowly. There we go. So yeah, when they're pulled up a little bit high, you can see there's quite a big gap here of that black section, which is probably not quite how they should look. But yeah. Um, yeah, so back to this Alpha, Alpha Tori brand. I don't think I've heard of these guys before. So let us have a look. Stay home in style. Nice. Capitalizing on that coronavirus stuff. Very classy. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I know what this is. Yeah, so this is the, like, Red Bull fashion brand, which is uh, quite unusual. So, yeah, I remember when they launched, like, a promo thing of this. And, yeah, they do have some kind of, like, vaguely technical-looking clothes in their repertoire, which is quite interesting. I think this is definitely something to keep an eye out for in that, you know, it's potentially decent stuff. It's not necessarily stuff that I would wear. But, you know, something like this, for example, looks perfectly serviceable. So I certainly think that there are worse things out there. But yeah, I, I thought this was interesting as well, because it's like, it's essentially a merch brand, right? Because it's kind of like a Red Bull sort of thing. Um, for those guys to be doing things that are a little bit more like tech wear centric almost is definitely interesting. So it shows a bit more of a mainstream demand for something like this. Will I do a making a Fitpic video? Um, there's probably not enough content, to be honest, to do a whole video about that. I go out, I shoot stuff, normally with my tripod. Um, I use my phone as like a remote shutter and then I go home and then I edit stuff. And that's kind of about it. Um, there's no kind of crazy process or anything like that. Um, I use the A7 Mark III, which is that camera that's in front of me there. And yeah, I yeah, use the phone remote shutter. That's kind of it. Photoshop does the editing. Um, yeah, sometimes my girlfriend takes the pictures, which is good. Makes things way easier rather than, uh, rather than doing tripod stuff. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it might be ad block, I'm not sure. Don't know. Um, secondhand stuff that's not grailed. Um, as I said earlier, John Flip is a good one for the, the tech wear specific stuff. 
Um, other than that, there's the Facebook group. So there's a Techwear Facebook group. There's an acronym Facebook group as well. There's also the Techwear Clothing subreddit. They have a like buy sell trade thing. The Techwear Clothing Discord has that as well. So you can have a look there as well. There's quite a few different channels there to have a look at. Uh, what do I think about Volback? What do I think about Volback? I think I think a lot of people have a lot of opinions about Volback. Um, yeah, they're a they're a marketing focused brand. They're a marketing centric brand, and that is for a for a fashion buyer probably not really a good thing. And I'll show you what I mean. And I've spoken about this before. And I feel like I'm ruining my chances of ever getting anything from Volback, but this is just the way that it has to be. So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we have a look at these guys. So they they talk a big game. They talk a very big game. So you've got, like, all of their products are, like, the 100-year hoodie, indestructible, like, built for missions to Mars. It's all, like, way, way, way over the top. And what this is designed to do is... It's, it's really to appeal to people who feel like they're getting something that's better than everyone else. It's kind of like, yeah, I'm spending 230 pounds on a hoodie, but it's made of ceramic and it will do X, Y, Z. Like it's built with the same technology as jet engines. Like that sounds really good. It's great marketing. But how does jet engine technology actually make a better piece of clothing? Like you'll notice a lot of brands like Acronym, for example, would Acronym ever say like, we've used this technology from jet engines to make clothes? No, they say, we've refined the cut of this, the fabric of this down to its like maximum form to make a better product. They're never like equating it to anything else. And they're never trying to give it characteristics that are not what you would actually need. And all of the, the, the kind of true performance brands will do this. So Arcteryx, for example, they say, we built these trousers to be really, really good at rock climbing or running or whatever. Salomon, um, you know, those shoes that are down there that are off camera, they're like, we designed these shoes to be the best at trail running. They don't do, we designed these shoes so you can wear them on the moon. Um, it's, it's just, it's over the top. But I don't think this really appeals to a fashion audience. I don't think this really appeals to people who are buying acronym or valence products or whatever. I think this appeals to people who are into gadgets and tech rather than clothing. And I think it's, yeah, for, for people that have got a bit of disposable income, obviously, and they want that piece of clothing that is like, yeah, this has got technology in it. This is better than other stuff that's out there. Um, so that's kind of how I feel about it. Um, I don't, I, I'm sure this is like decent stuff. I, I don't think this is like a scam or a, a con or anything. But I just think, it, like, if you look at the way that all this stuff is worded, like, it's, it's just, it's too much for me and it makes it seem insincere. Because, like, if I'm buying a jacket and, yeah, they're, they're talking about how it can, like, survive Mars and stuff, I'm like, well, I don't need that. So why am I buying it again? And it, yeah, it makes it sound like snake oil, almost. So yeah, that's uh, that's my extended Volback opinion. <laughs> uh, do I think androgynous fits have a place in techwear? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, I think there's lots of androgynous stuff that could be done. I think a lot of techwear kind of hides the silhouette. Um, and it makes things look very kind of straight and it's very concealing and stuff. So yeah, I think gender doesn't matter too much for a lot of this stuff. So yeah, absolutely, no reason why not. Uh, Kevin says, do I have camera recommendations for people wanting to move up from cell phone pics? So yeah, I actually have a great recommendation. So if I can move this. So what I used for several years was this right here. This is a Sony, a bit dusty. Uh, RX100 Mark III. This looks like, I don't know, it looks like a little compact camera, right? It, doesn't, it looks like something that your mum takes and like uses for her travel pictures. But this is actually a super nice piece of kit. It's better quality than you would expect from its small size. Um, aperture, uh, f1.8 lens, so you get like a nice depth of field effect. It's really portable, really easy to use. Screen flips out as I keep doing, so you can do like, you can be epic YouTube vlogger 
yo, what's up, my dudes? It's the cool gamer is 69 or whatever. And it means that, yeah, if you take photos of yourself as well, you can try and frame the shot a little bit better with this. Um, so yeah, RX100 Mark III. That is a good one. And then, yeah, up from that, I went from that to the A7 III, which, you know, is uh, several tiers up. <laughs> Breaking out the cool pics, yeah. Get my neck on out. Get my, uh, what was it, like Fujifilm. Uh, although they're still going, aren't they? They still make some decent stuff. Um, yeah, did I say John? Yeah, so let me type that out. So that's how it's spelled, John Flip. Yeah, I agree. Sony make really great compact cameras. I used to work for them. I used to do like camera demos and, and sales and stuff. Um, so I used to be the guy that would like sit in the shop and be like, can I interest you in a demo of a new camera? And everyone would be like, no. And then you'd get like the one person out of a hundred that would be like, yeah, go on then. And then I get to show them all the cool features of the camera. So uh, yeah, that's, um, that's a little bit about me. That was when I was like 18, I think, that I did that for a little bit. Mm. Um, yeah, Sean says, Acronym Markets, everything is unisex. Uh, yeah, that, they did do some specific pieces for women, I think, quite a long time ago. And they do have female models in some of their stuff as well. Um, do I drive slash ride a futuristic looking car or bike in order to fit the tech recipe? Um, no, sadly. Uh, no, I, I don't have the... What's it called? The, I can't remember what the bike is called in a Kia ever. I wish I had that. I don't. I have. Uh, I got the German Whip. I got the BMW 1 Series. So that's that's my ride, um, which yeah is pretty nice. But I'm obviously not really using it that much at the moment. What do I know of para jumpers, if anything? Uh, I don't know anything about para jumpers. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, no idea, I'm afraid. Crisis wear, pretty cool for a brand that has more feminine orientated or gender neutral stuff. Okay, crisis wear. Let's have a little look at this. Crisis wear. Handmade futuristic clothing right up my street. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see what the deal is. I see what the deal is with this stuff. It's a little bit, it's got some, <clears throat> it's got some like Hot Topic vibes a little bit with the fingerless gloves and that sort of thing. But, yeah, you know, I'm sure there's some fun stuff in there. Yeah, this is, uh, it looks a little bit, it's a little bit costumey, I think, for my tastes at least. But yeah, I, I definitely see, you know, they've, they've got very much a gender balance there. And uh, yeah, a lot of it is kind of agendered stuff, so... Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I definitely see the appeal on, like, the big cowl hoods and things because they're kind of fun to wear for sure. Uh, I don't know about the Japanese brand Helvetica, though. I know the font, but not the brand. So let's have a look. Helvetica brand. Brands? No. Brand. Uh, I'm probably not going to find it, I think, because it's just going to tell me about the font. But, uh, yeah. Um... What else? How do I get over the embarrassment of taking photos of yourself outside? You, you just get used to it, basically. Um, I remember, yeah, the first time being outside, yeah, like really hating it, and like when people walk past, it's just like, oh. and people like people will look at you because it's weird, right? It's weird standing there with a tripod and you're standing there looking all edgy and like trying to be cool or whatever, with like the hood on, and you got your angry scowl and you're trying to look all sick or whatever, and then you've got some like family walking past with their dog and the people are like don't look like hiding their kids from you so yeah it's it's a bit it's a bit weird but you just get used to it it's the same with like walking around vlogging because i remember back in the day i did a few like vlogs where i'd walk around in public and yeah it's weird at first but you just you just stop noticing people after a while or you just start caring less uh tesla truck yeah i would tesla truck definitely fits the aesthetic so yeah i'd be up for that big time uh let me call up elon my man I'll get one in there for the review, for the boys, for the culture. Let's do it. Uh, Power Jumpers is semi-functional gear that costs as much as Acronym. All right, okay, fair enough. Do I consider a leaks as techwear? That's a very good question. I mean, <clears throat> it has all the hallmarks of a techwear product, right? It's got technical fabrics used, yes, to an extent. Um, it's very like 
the the looks are very performance centric so yeah i think i think in a lot of ways it is but it's like the the high fashion take on it in a similar way to what dior has done like they've done quite a lot of technical based products so yeah i, I wouldn't say like if someone was wearing an elix jacket in part of an outfit i wouldn't be like that's not tech wear. that guy's wearing elix um and i think you know i think they've got some cool pieces and i like some of their stuff just for me, it's priced way too high relative to what it actually does. It's definitely a high fashion product first and a technical performance product second. Whereas I kind of prefer things that are weighted a bit more equally. So I feel like Acronym, for example, is a brand that speaks more to me because they've got like the aesthetics is absolutely there. And then the performance and the innovation from that side of things is also absolutely there. Whereas for Alix, it's like more, more like this a little bit. Um, but yeah. I, I, I'm not going to clown on them as much as everyone else does, even though, even though they can't stop using that Cobra buckle and everyone calls it the Elix roller coaster buckle. And it's not, it's not the Elix roller coaster buckle. It's a Cobra buckle. It's made by Austria Alpin and it costs like 20 quid or something. It doesn't cost 150 pounds because it says Elix on it. Um, but yeah, despite that, I think they've got some nice stuff. And I don't mind actually some of their interpretations of that, like the bracelets or whatever, where they've got like the mini versions on. Those are kind of cute. So I know some people like to hate on those, but I think they're okay. Uh, let's talk about Lego. I'd love to I'd love to talk about Lego. I would love to do a Lego stream. That would be great. I don't know if that's, uh, that's something that people would actually want, like two hours of me sitting there building a Lego model. But yeah, as you can see from the back, wait, if I do the, if I do the webcam, oh, oh, it's the different angle. Nobody asked for that. Uh, hang on. If we do... There we go. Right. So if I do the multi-angle approach, then we can see. You can tell I'm a professional live streamer. Look at this. We've got the multi-angles going on. So yeah, we've got the... Uh, we got the goods. Can I point correctly? Yeah, I've got quite the Lego collection, as you can see. So they're all the Lego architecture series, which are they're some of my favorite Lego models. I think they're very cool. They're a little bit more expensive than regular Lego, so it's not like super great value for money, but I just really like how they're very like, they're very kind of sober looking and they're very, uh, they kind of, they fit the look. They look very cool to me. Like they're not play sets. They're like cool little models. And I think this is going to sound like a bit of sort of nerdy or whatever, but I really like when you're actually building it, you can get a really good sense of a, like how well the instructions and the builds are actually made. Like they're built in such a way that when you're assembling the model, it feels really sturdy and it's really clear and it's really easy to put together. And there's clearly been a lot of thought into the design of the set in terms of how those objects actually fit together. And there's some really cool like building techniques that they use and like really interesting ways that they put those blocks and those bricks together to form like different buildings and stuff. So yeah, that, that really appeals to me. And there's definitely, yeah, it kind of like satisfies the same itch as, uh, as Techware does, I suppose. So yeah, I'm a big fan of them for that reason. Uh, yeah, may, maybe a Lego stream one day, who knows? Uh, let me switch back to this one. <clears throat> uh, yeah, what Alix did with the Cobra buckle is similar to what a Virgil did with the Kong buckle. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's it's very similar. Oh, except Alix did it to like ten times that level. They they absolutely clowned it. But yeah, I, I agree. Uh, probably the coolest formal tag wear. Um, yeah, I, I'd say to an extent. Yeah, Prada also very good example of that. They've got some really cool stuff. Yeah, uh, I agree though on the Mario Lego. I'm not a fan of that. Not a fan of that. Uh, I've not heard of Flower Mountain though either. Japanese brand. Should we have a quick look at that? Uh, let's see if this actually comes up with anything. Japanese sneakers. Right, so let's go back to this. Oh, here we go. So this is interesting. Yeah, I have never heard of this brand before. So thank you for this recommendation. Uh, here we go. Kit complete. Yeah, we got some interesting stuff here. Never really seen things like this before. So yeah, they got some... Yeah, they're kind of interesting. It's definitely more the, the kind of hiker style stuff i that seemed that's definitely a, a thing like the the japanese brands are always like much more in the hiker kind of style you know like Anne wanda snow peak these guys uh nanamika north face purple label it's all that more kind of capturing the traditional americana hiker look which is really interesting because you've got like 
loads of people in America are like fetishizing Japanese and Eastern culture. And then over in Japan, you've got like almost fetishized uh, American culture. <clears throat> and that's something that's persisted for, for a very long time. Like, um, you know, you go as far back as like the 60s and 70s, you'd have people that were importing Levi's jeans in Japan so that they could copy the kind of traditional American style. Um, there's a whole book about it actually called Ametora, um, which is definitely worth a read. Uh, Ametora. Uh, yeah, if you ever want to have a look at that, that is what the book looks like. Very interesting. It basically goes through um, a Japanese kind of fashion history from like the 50s onwards and how um, America was influenced by Japan and Japan was influenced by America. So that's, yeah, that's interesting. <clears throat> Um, that laptop stand, uh, I can't remember the brand, but I bought it from Amazon. Um, I literally just searched like monitor and laptop stand, something like that. It was about 60 pounds, so maybe $80. Um, what size? I didn't, I don't actually own any Steven cargos. I don't think. No, I've got the cropped cargos, but not the Stevens. Um, but yeah, you, you could definitely take them to a tailor and taper them if you wanted, but you'd probably be better off just buying something that is right from the get-go rather than trying to taper stuff to fit afterwards, I think, when it comes to a product like that. <clears throat> uh, Burj Khalifa, best architecture set. Yeah, the Burj Khalifa, that's one of the original ones. Burj Khalifa, Lego. Yeah, this one is quite cute looking. But yeah, it's quite old now. I love how it's like, it's basically all one piece and they just like made it into one thing. It's fun. Yeah, sorry about the, uh, the mechanical keyboard noise. We're rocking the, uh, we got the Anne Pro here, the Mark II. I actually own two of them. There's one uh, in the back over there as well. That's uh, that's just how it be. I'm a fan of them. So, yeah, you were you were right on the sandal. The sandal is is definitely the one for me. Uh, yeah, biscuit. I agree. I agree for sure. Um, yeah, that's another thing that I like is that architecture uses like the normal bricks but then they use them in interesting ways. Whereas, yeah, with a lot of the other lines, they'll be like, oh, we need a brick to do this. And then they just make a totally different one. Uh, funny you say about Shola dry skin cowboy hats because uh, who was it? Nana Nika have already done a Gore-Tex uh, kind of hat. And yeah, so like they've got these ones. <clears throat> so I mean, you you just gotta scroll on past without saying ye howdy. I mean, okay, fine, it's not a cowboy hat, all right, it's not, but it's not dissimilar, so it's uh, yeah, it's not too far off. What switches? These are using Gatoron brown switches. They are very similar to cherry brown switches, but they've got kind of smoother action, even though they're technically a Chinese knockoff switch. Um, they're actually pretty good. So yeah, I, I'd recommend Gatorons for sure. Uh, it's a 60% keyboard. Um, this one's called an Anne Pro. I don't own any Ducky ones, but this is very, very similar to, I think Ducky have a 60% design and it's very similar to that. Uh, modular clothing recommendations. Um, who's got cool modular stuff? I saw a cool pair of Maharishi cargos actually recently that have, they've got like a clip off cargo pocket that turns into a little bag, which is really cute. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, let me, I'm gonna have a look to see if there's anything that I've missed that I haven't talked about yet. I don't know if there's any like upcoming SS20 stuff that you guys have seen that you've been a fan of. But uh, yeah, like we went through Acronym, we went through a couple of the Gorilla Group things. Do you want to have, should we have a little look at Onfon Levo? Because <clears throat> I'll give you guys a little bit of a, give you guys a little bit of a preview and that there's going to be an Onfon Levo video coming up, but specifically about different materials. So we've already got a pair of Amez 2s, which come in dry skin. And I've got on the way a pair of, uh, where are they? Um, I'll show you what we got coming. Uh, but we got some we got some nice things. So we have, I think it's these. I think it's the orange. Yeah, so it's this one. <clears throat> yeah, so we've got these, 
showing up. Um, but because we've got a pair of dry skin pants, we've got the uh, Stotts Etterproof version, and we've also got a twill pair coming as well. So what the video is gonna be about, it's gonna be like comparing those three different materials, because one of the, the good things about Enfant Leve is that you can pick different materials for quite a few of their different things. Um, but it, it can be quite difficult to discern like what one is the right one for me, what one should I go for, especially when you don't have experience with those things. So they do have some information about how they feel and how they are and stuff, but I think it would definitely be helpful for people to have that direct comparison in video form as well. So yeah, that's how it's gonna be. And I don't own anything stocks yet, so I'm actually really looking forward to that. I think that's gonna be really good. So uh, yeah, there's, there's one to look out for there. I quite like the cut of these as well. They're a little bit more relaxed than the Hermes 2s are, but they've still got that, that kind of nice shape to them. There's a little bit of taper there, but they'll work with slightly bigger shoes. These are the Salomon XA Alpine 2s, the all black versions. Although I think what they did, they bought the black and blue ones here and they actually blacked out that bit of the back. You can tell there by, I think the, the paint looks a little bit different. So I think they have like painted those over. Uh, what else have we got? Are there any other techwear communities that aren't techwear photos besides this channel and the subreddit? Um, yeah, as someone already answered, Matt already said there's the Discord channel as well. Those are the best ones. There's a couple of Facebook groups as well. There's one that's called, I think it's just called like Techware Buy Sell Trade, and there's the acronym Buy Sell Trade Facebook group as well. Those are also decent places to go. Uh, no Techware General, of course, anymore. That exploded in a big ball of flames. So uh, RIP to anyone that was ever in that Discord, but that is now gone. So we're, uh, we're missing that one. But yeah, those are the best places really. And um, yeah, weirdly, like I think this channel is technically like the biggest techware community. I don't, yeah, I think the subreddit is maybe a little bit smaller or maybe it's a similar size. Uh, but yeah, either way, like this is, this is actually one of the bigger places. So, uh, which I'm super grateful for because I, uh, I think it's really cool. That everyone's like, everyone's down with this stuff and everyone's like, Everyone finds it really, uh, like, really useful being able to see the videos and stuff. So, um, and that's that's what keeps me doing stuff at the end of the day. Like, as long as people still enjoy these videos and people still find them useful and the stuff that people want to know, then yeah, I'm absolutely gonna gonna keep on doing it. So, uh, so yeah, the the community is gonna keep building for sure. Uh, I didn't know so much black had his own Discord, but that's cool. It might be yeah, it's probably a bit more like material focused because I know that's very much his thing. Uh, Benny says he uses Shop Tagger. Well, good call. Shout out to you. I hope you're uh, I hope you're getting on well with it. I've you know as as you guys have seen from the multiple videos, I've used it for a whole bunch of different things. So I've got like hundreds of products saved in there now. I actually think it's a really cool idea. The first time I saw it was when another uh, I think it was when Magnus Ronning, if you guys know him, he did a video like a sponsored video about it. So I was like, yeah, like that seems like a really cool idea. That's really interesting. And um, that's some interesting comments. Uh, you can go on time out. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, he, he did that. And uh, and yeah, I thought it was a really cool idea. And then they reached out to me after watching that video. So it was quite opportune timing. So yeah, I, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, we actually just caught up. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You guys are ahead of me now. <laughs> I've been beaten. We need to get we need to get back on it. It's got to be the the techwear clothing versus this is Antoine, techwear drama. Who will win the next biggest thing since T series versus PewDiePie? <laughs> um, Sean for the Esku material suggestion. So let's have a look at a little look, uh, a little look at the Esku. So these are the ones that are most similar to the acronym P30s. So I think, I think probably dry skin will be really nice in these because of the, um, the, the kind of weight of the material and the drape and because I really like the, the P30s and dry skin. So I'd probably recommend that. I've got the Aldats in the, the technical twill, which is really, really lightweight. They're good for summer because they're really thin and yeah, really light, as I say. But I think dry skin is probably going to be a good option there. Um, did someone end up winning the giveaway? Yeah, I actually don't know who won because Shop Tagger did all that kind of centrally. So like I didn't pick the winner. It was done randomly. 
So I don't know, but I, I will ask actually and find out because I would like to know who ended up winning that giveaway. Um, yeah, what happened with the TechWare general discord? So you want to hear some, some juicy TechWare drama, then, uh, then here goes, I guess. So I'll give you guys the abridged version, but basically the TechWare, TechWare general discord was, uh, it was like the TechWare discord. So it was the one that most people went to. It was kind of like a 4chan offshoot. So it was created from, yeah, like X 4chan posters, basically. And uh, yeah, they set this place up. So always because of that, it was always kind of, uh, it wasn't super newbie friendly and it was, it always had a little bit of an abrasive edge to it. But, you know, everything was kind of okay. There was, you know, people would come and go, there was drama, etc. cetera. Um, but over time, the, the moderators ended up kind of changing and being replaced. And eventually the, the moderator team was like very, very draconian and very over the top. Um, and they would basically just kind of delete things without telling people. They would, yeah, they would kind of like just go really, really heavy handed on the rules. And there was also um, a kind of evidence suggesting kind of like, not necessarily like out and out racism, but like it, there was a little bit of a kind of like alt-right kind of deal with like some of the mod team. And I think that kind of like spread out a little bit which was not really, it didn't really make it a very good environment. So people basically gave up on it. People stopped posting and the Techware clothing discord was created. People moved over to that one. Um, and kind of the rest was history, really. Um, yeah, people really stopped posting in, in the Techware general one. And then, uh, yeah, the mods basically just systematically removed every single channel in there. They kicked a bunch of people out. I used to be, for a short period of time, I was a mod on TechWare General, and then they removed me, and then they removed me from even being a, a regular, so I was down to a normal member, even though, like, I was in that community for, like, three years or something, like, longer than most of the mods. <laughs> they basically kicked me out. And, um, yeah, to, to give you guys, like, an idea of, of, like, it being a welcoming place, they had a, a like, a... Uh, uh, a text thread, I guess. What are they called? A channel, channel, text channel called like newbie questions or something. And on the, the pinned posts, you could click on that. And one of the like top things was like, like just to let everyone know, like the video that Anton made about like the, the two sides of tech or something is like really shit. And like, these are the reasons why. And it was like an essay about why my video was bad. So it's like, that was like the first thing that people see is like, oh, I'm a newbie to tech And the first thing they see is like, don't watch this because it sucks. And there was another post that was like, don't buy this shoe because it's really bad. And it's like, yeah, it was, it was just, it was just bad. But the world's a better place now that, now that that's gone. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you, you did pick a weird time to join, right? As I'm explaining some Discord drama, but, uh, it's all over now. And now, uh, the tech work clothing Discord is a much better place. So, uh, that's a, a nice place to go for some friendly techware discussion. So, uh, yeah. Um, what are my thoughts on a cold wall? I think a cold wall is a very cool brand. I am a big fan. I would like to own more than I do. Um, in fact, do I own anything a cold wall? I can't remember. I've got a few Oakley Samuel Ross things, which to me are like a cold wall light. And it's like really cheap as well because it always goes on sale because like no one likes it or no one really knows about it or whatever. But yeah, I think Cold War is really interesting. Um, they've got some really cool bits. It's definitely more the like aesthetics first, performance second. Um, but I don't think that's a bad thing. And I think it's, yeah, it's a very kind of brutalist, more industrial take on stuff. That definitely appeals to me. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot to like about the brand. I think it's very interesting. And I, I'm keeping an eye on them for sure. So yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely recommend having a look at those guys. Uh, yeah, me and Slack got booted on the same day. Yeah, uh, I remember I got <clears throat> my official reason for being kicked out of being a regular was for uh, giving a clown react to one of the mods because he was being a clown. So I just, just put a clown react on his post, and uh, and apparently that's not acceptable. So I got the boot for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, what's my favorite TV show? Good question. I don't know. I don't watch a massive amount of TV to be honest. Um, I've been enjoying Castlevania a lot. I thought that was really good. Uh, I can't even think of what else I've watched recently. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to pass on that, which is not a very interesting answer, but there you go, that's what you're getting. Uh, there's no real ACG news, I don't think, Mark, unfortunately. Um, I wish Nike Lab ACG was coming back, but it's just not to be. Just not to be. Oh, I've, I've had this, like, crotch shot up for ages. We should probably change this to something else. Uh, what was the name of this? A cold wall light. Oh, yeah, so... Oakley... Uh, let me... Hang on, hang on. If I can... Yeah, so the, the kind of brainchild of uh, a cold wall is Samuel Ross. And he did a couple of now collections with Oakley. And they're full clothing collections. And none of these images are loading, which is really helpful. I don't know what the deal with this is. Can we get some images in here, please? It might be because like all this stuff is sold out or something, but anyway, um, if I go to images. But yeah, this has like, here we go. It's, you've, it's got a lot of the a Cold Wall design ethos. You can definitely tell that this is Samuel Ross gear, but it's a little bit different. And a lot of this stuff hit like big sales, big time. So you can sometimes find this stuff quite cheap. So uh, to give you some context, like I I own these trousers. I think they retail at like 250 pounds or something. And I got them for like 90. Uh, that jacket I saw on sale for like 230 pounds. That was maybe 140 for that backpack it was down to. Whereas, yeah, a cold wall stuff is way, way more expensive than that. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's worth a look. There's some cool stuff. I don't know if they're doing any more collections because <clears throat> I guess because they hit the sales so bad, it probably indicates to me that they didn't really do that well or perform that well. Um, oh, but thank you. Thank you for the nice words. It's, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate your appreciation. Um, and at the end of the day, it's it's stuff like that is the the reason that I do these videos. Really, if there's there's people that appreciate it, there's people that enjoy it, and there's people that find it useful, then um, then yeah, then I'm gonna keep doing it. So thank you for that. Uh, I don't own any fakes. No, we did speak about that a little bit a little bit recently. Um, hey Carl, how you doing? Uh, have I ever seen Mr. Robot? Yeah, I watched the first two seasons. So I hadn't watched the third one, but I did quite enjoy it. So there's no particular reason why I didn't keep watching it. I just didn't. But yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Uh, any inspos for the fat boys? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what. Slack, who's in this very chat right now, um, will check out the IG. Because he's, he's one of the... Probably the, what's the word? Like the most notable, like bigger dude into tech wear. And, uh, and I think he's got some cool fits. So I was a big, big fan of this one that he posted recently. So uh, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely recommend uh, check out my man Slack if you are uh, if you want to get into this stuff. Um, but yeah, so it, it can be difficult for sure because a lot of cuts are like slim and stuff and, and not everything... Uh, not everything is like suited for all body types, I guess. Um, and I find that as well. Like as someone that's quite tall, there's a lot of brands that I would love to wear more, but I can't really. So um, like Cavent, for example, I think Cavent is a really cool brand, but I just don't own that much of their stuff because simply put, it's designed for shorter people than me. Um, so the jumpers are really, really, they really come up short. They're not particularly flattering. I still like them. I still think they're really cool and I would still buy stuff from this brand, but yeah, it's I just have to accept that it's not for me. So uh, yeah, to, to an extent, there is there's a lot of stuff like that. <clears throat> um, I should, yeah, I, I do plan on going back actually. So thanks for the recommendation, Billy, for, uh, for more Mr. Robot. And yeah, thanks, Joey. All is doing well over here. I'm kind of all right. Uh, to be honest, I spend quite a lot of time indoors anyway, because like gaming is my main hobby and then I make videos. So it doesn't affect me as much as it could have done. And I worked from home anyway. I was working from home four days out of five before this kind of became a thing. So it's been way less disruptive for me than it has a lot of people. But I certainly feel for people who have had a much more disruptive experience of this whole thing. And as I said earlier, that's partly the reason why I wanted to do this as a bit of a live thing. So it's a little bit, um, it's just kind of more informal and it's just a bit more 
kind of fun and like because i know everyone's holed up by themselves so it's just nice for everyone to just be able to sit down here and chill so yeah i'm glad everyone's here here having a good little time uh but yeah matthew as uh, as you say exactly Callum's is a boxy fit it's meant for an oversized fit so stuff like this works really well if you're a bit shorter i think because then it, it gives that oversized look better in a more controlled way but for me because I have to go a size up on Cavent, so it makes it look really wide on me. Um, there's a lot of spare room, for sure. Uh, Hetty, how many hours have I clocked on Animal Crossing? So, as of yesterday, I was on 100, which is quite a lot, because this game came out like a week and a half ago, or like two weeks ago or something. Um, but yeah, 150 is pretty impressive, so you must have a pretty nice town by now. So, uh, yeah, but... Uh, big, big shout out to everyone that's playing Animal Crossing. It's, uh, it's basically... It's like the perfect game for right now when everyone's locked up inside. Um, oh, Michael, if you're if you're in the NHS, then shout out to you. I know you will have been putting out, uh, um, like doing a lot of hard work for sure at the moment. So uh, yeah, just uh, you are much appreciated. That's for sure, especially at a time like this. Um, what do I do for a living? Yeah, that uh, we talked about that a bit earlier, but I work for a tech company. So I do social media marketing. So my, my work setup is over there. That's where I do my work. And then I come here and then that's where I spend all my free time. So I definitely, I, I'm, I've got to find the appropriate meme. Because uh, this, is, this is literally my life. Uh, so it's way too accurate not to, not to show. But yeah, that, that is literally me. Because I'm like sitting over there and I get to like 5 p.m. or like a bit past 5 or whatever. And I'm literally like, oh, wow, can't, can't wait to just put this down and go edit my video or like go and play video games. And I come and move over here in this chair, the same chair. I just wheel it over. Uh, although that is a that's a standing desk. So that can like move up and down. So at least I get to stand up a little bit. But uh, yeah, uh, what I say IT work is better in the UK rather than the US. Um yeah, I don't know, to be honest. I've got no real experience with the US. But I work for an American company, so there's a lot of guys that, that are over there in the US. I, I don't know how it compares, to be honest. Um, but yeah, in marketing, it's it's not too bad, but I guess it depends on your department. But I know, in general, the working environment in the US is quite hard compared to the UK, and I know you guys get a lot less holiday than we do. Like, I get, I think, 25 days for the year, which is, you know, that's not unusual for um, like a white collar worker, I suppose. Whereas in America, I think that's quite unusual, right? I think you guys are on like two weeks or three weeks or something, which is, um, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's weird to us. It's quite low. Uh, I have actually never drop shipped stuff. I've never bought from a drop shipping company and, uh, and I've never, never tried doing it either. I think it's a bit of a, I don't know, it's a little bit of a lame business practice, I think, because you're not actually adding any real value. You're just like reselling stuff that already exists. I get it if like you're doing something to those products or you're holding them yourself or you're providing a service that the original retailer is not really providing. But yeah, a lot of dropshippers are literally just like waiting for orders to come in and then they just send things from another website to them. So yeah, I don't really see what they're adding. <clears throat> uh, yeah, more rights in the UK side. Yeah, you are probably right there. More perks though in the US. So yeah, I guess swings and roundabouts in that sense. Um, I've got some like okay perks. Uh, I get I get healthcare, which is nice. Um, well, I get private healthcare. Obviously, everyone has public healthcare, which is cool. Um, yeah, which I know is a bit of a, a sore topic, US versus UK. So we won't get into that. Uh, Joey, latest purchase that I've made is, I can show you right now. Uh, so these will probably be next week's video, but you guys get a little bit of a sneak peek. So Salomon, S-Lab, Speedcross. I think these are pretty cool. I think these look great. I've been wearing these for trail running recently. Little performance-based shoe. I bought these on sale, so... Yeah, they weren't too expensive. And uh, yeah, I'm a fan. They're definitely designed for trail running though. This is a this is a softer ground outsole. So uh, not perfect. 
not really for city use, but yeah, I really like them and I think they're very cool. Um, it's Vic. Hey, what's in that frame behind you? Excellent spot there, almost as if you've seen it already before. Should we have a look? Should we have a look now? Because you guys have not seen this before. Let's have a little look. Let's check this out. <clears throat> so first of all, get a, get a look at this. You see this? This is the This Is Antoine in front of you. And now, the Lego version. It's This Is Antoine, and I'm holding a game controller because I'm an epic gamer. In fact, we can do, we can do the side-by-side. So we'll do, there you go. Which one, which one is better? <laughs> Lego me or, or real me? I'm kind of in favor of the Lego one, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that, so that's that. Uh, yeah, people were talking about Uniden recently. Um, yeah, I've I've heard I've heard some like bad things about the the customer support side. So I did do a sponsored video with them like right when they started, and I liked the fact that they, well, they apparently weren't drop shipping stuff, and they actually have their own warehouse. They're actually working directly with the brands. So those were all good things to me, and that to me puts it above. <clears throat> the other kind of drop shipping things but yeah since then unfortunately i've heard some bad stories about kind of the way that he has been conducting business and yeah like not replying to emails and i think there was maybe a case on reddit of him like pretending to be other people and kind of being like oh you should order from uniden but it was actually him um which is kind of a bit it's a bit lame and it's kind of sorry it's a bit it's sorry uh I don't know what I'm trying to say. It was a bit of a shame, basically, that that, that happened. But that's the way it been. That's the way it been. Um, yeah, Carl. So that your your experience there of um, uh, of like kind of getting into techware because you see you know hashtag techware on Instagram or whatever, and you wanna. You want to kind of engage with that style and then you go down the more kind of ninjury route and end up being disappointed. I don't think that's an uncommon thing. And that's partly why I'm, I'm, I make these videos because I want people, I want people to have like better knowledge of the whole landscape and the whole market before they make those decisions. And, you know, I, I have no issue with people buying from those brands, but so long as they know that, like, as long as they know what they're getting and as long as they know what the alternatives are and what techware, for me at least, is really about, then you know you have all the information then you can make that decision and you might think you know what i don't really care about the performance that much i just want to dress like a ninja then you do you there's nothing wrong with that but yeah i think there's a lot of people out there that they see the hashtag and they think oh that's what techwear is and they search you know techwear clothing and then they find one of the drop shipping sites and then they end up getting stung because it takes ages their stuff to come and yeah it's not that great when it shows up bad construction bad quality whatever um, so yeah, it, it kind of sucks, but yeah, my, my advice really would be to just, just kind of wait it out almost. Don't, don't feel pressured to like buy an outfit for X amount of money. If you see something you like, maybe it's a bit expensive or whatever, save up, get that thing that you really want. And then you're going to end up way happier with it rather than being like, Oh, I really want this thing, but I want it right now. So I'm going to buy the thing that I can afford because you might end up buying something that isn't quite right for you. Um, and that's something that I've talked about before in, in different videos before. Uh, hey, Grease, how you doing? Hello. Um, <laughs> double XL size is needed. Um, always a mistake online is people will spot it. Yeah. Yeah, never reply to emails. Yeah, I think there's been a few people where that's happened. So it's, uh, it is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, and um, yeah, that guy ended up getting banned from the Techwear Clothing subreddit as well. Wow, Lego me more chiseled. Huh, I see. Banned. Absolutely banned. <laughs> the Lego doesn't have the thick thighs, though. That's true. That is true. Um, someone asked, actually, if I am a runner. Um, yeah, I, I, suppose, I suppose I am a runner. I wouldn't, I wouldn't define myself as that, but I do run almost every day, so... Uh, yeah, I do a fair bit of running. I posted my running outfit on the IG story this morning. 
Uh, so that was what I was using. So I primarily run in Nike gear, although I've got some Under Armour stuff, and I've got some Lululemon shorts as well, which are quite nice. So um, yeah, I've, I've become a fan of that brand over the last couple of days, so I'll probably buy some more stuff um, from them. Isaac, I am 27, we established earlier. Um, yeah, that's that's not the first time that was that was us. I don't know why. Maybe it's the grey hairs. It's all the stress of doing YouTube. It's making me look old. I don't know how many years I've got left, boys. This might be another like another couple of years, and I'll be out. I'll be done. Uh, AstroTurf, I, <laughs> football appropriate name. Uh, I don't watch football. No, I am. I am not a sporty kind of dude. Um, yeah, I was like. I wasn't the kid that would always get picked last or whatever, but I was, I was not a natural team sportman. Um, I was much more into like, you know, mountain biking and skateboarding and, you know, I used to have like rollerblades and shit like that. Like, I'd, I'd, I'd much more, I'm much more in favor of that than, than I am like tennis or football or stuff like that. Yeah, isolation is okay, thanks. But uh, yeah, that's, that's why we're here. That's why we're out here doing this stuff. So who has good sales right now? Um, that is a good question. I can tell you some things. I did have a list somewhere. Uh, give me a second though. So who have we got? I know, for example, there's a couple of people that have acronym on sale, which is very, very rare. So if we have a look on Notre Shop, the Palace of Notre Shop. So these guys, is it this website? Mm. Yeah, I'm not being stupid, am I? Yeah, so these guys, there's actually a sale code that works. Uh, what is it? Oh, maybe it's not valid anymore. It was March 20, but you could try. Um, yeah, you could try putting in sale codes for Notra because they did have these things available on sale. They were 20% off, I think. Um, and also, Pegs, yeah, Pegs and Sun was another one. So I'm showing you guys these things because it's very, very rare for acronyms to go on sale. So I wanted to, to draw your attention to it. They, like, none of these guys have, like, the best pieces or whatever. But yeah, Unity 20, that will save you 20% on any of those things. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Bernie, for the, the two euros 99. It is much appreciated. Oh, I've got a cute little, cute little, like, foxy cat type thing. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. It's much appreciated. Yeah, I turned on the the super chat things, I think, after the last stream, which was like a year ago or something. And uh, I don't really know what the uptake is like on them. But um, I know people have asked before about like, oh, can I donate? Can I support the channel or whatever? And that's never really been something that I've been super keen on. Oh, does a pegs and something not work? Maybe they fixed it or something because, yeah, I'm sure I tried it before and the discount did actually go through. So... That's kind of a shame. Um, but yeah, these guys did have the sale on before. This is a Brighton-based retailer. So for any of you UK boys, I think this is like the one UK retailer that has them. Um, but yeah, Painful Sheep, you are correct. They are not supposed to allow discounts on acronym, which is why it's so rare that you'll actually get things. It's basically when the retailers um, kind of get stuff wrong and they forget to exclude it. Uh, yeah, 18 Montrose has a good sale, that is for sure. Um, Essence had site-wide 20% off, I think. Uh, John Elliott as well had 20% off their permanent collection. Um, I know Amdus have 25% off. Uh, End have a bunch of stuff as well. There's quite a lot of websites that are doing sales right now. Uh, favorite food? I'm a, I'm a pizza main. Pizza for life. Yeah, pizza's definitely the top one. I know that's a bit of a, like, a basic thing to like. I know I should be like, ah, oh, yes, uh... So, guy, uh, my favorite is... Uh, I'm not going to do the racist Japanese accent. Um, pretend like I'm all, like, Japanese cultured or whatever and say that I really like, I don't know, some obscure Japanese dish. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a pizza fan. I can't lie. Um, <laughs> thank you, Velzko, for the, the hair compliment. I, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a few weeks. It's going to end up looking awful because I can't get it cut now for ages. Um... Uh, the Adidas My Shelter rain jacket. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. My Shelter rain jacket. Let's see what this looks like. I am not the biggest Adidas fan in general. Um, I think they are very hit and miss. 
So that's kind of weird looking. That's pretty crazy. I guess though you probably mean this top one. Yeah, I mean 230 is quite a lot for me, I think, to want to pay. Um, is that is that a jacket sling there, I spy? I think it might be. Interesting. I mean, this is, it's looking a bit Nike Lab ACG knockoff, isn't it? With the text on the inside and with the straps. Yeah. It's, it's seeming a bit knockoffy to me. Yeah, I'm, I don't like the branding either. I'm not a big fan of that. And yeah, the, the cut, not, yeah, it's, it's not doing it for me, I'm afraid. I'm not a massive fan of this, for sure. Um, but yeah, as I say, I'm not the biggest Adidas fan in general. Um, good, cool, Matt. Snow Peak having a sale as well. Um, they're definitely worth a look. Uh, do I play any instruments? Yes, I play the drums and I play the bass guitar. So, multi-instrumentalist. Uh, drums is definitely my main thing, though. I'm, I'm somewhat of an amateur bass guitar player. But, uh, but I haven't played for quite a while, actually. Um, I've not seen the Nike Stussy stuff, actually. I think I saw one of their shoes, actually. But I wasn't particularly... I wasn't like, oh, whoa. Like, yeah. It was, it was a thing. It didn't really catch my attention. So, um, yeah, I, I guess neutral on that one. Um, yeah, and used to stock acronym back in the day. I think they got banned from stocking it because I think there was a couple of occasions where they accidentally put it on sale as well. I don't know that. I don't have like insider info. That's just what I'm guessing. Um, I've not seen hackers, no, but yeah, possible inspo there. Farfetch, yes, also have a sale. Um, what else? What else? I'm trying to like scroll through to find find the questions. Uh, will the stream be available to watch later? Yeah, I think it should go up as a video. I don't know if I have to like set something in this, but uh, but yeah, I I want it to. So if it does, then then yes, it will. Um, ah, thanks so much, Off Chain, for the the five euros. Much appreciated. And uh, yeah, very glad that you like the videos. As I said before, um, that's exactly why I do them. Basically, people that enjoy them, people that find them useful. Uh, that's why I'm here. So I'm gonna keep doing that stuff for sure. Um, yeah, they were cool selling Bape as well. So what they would do, Bape, I don't know if they still do, but they used to have a thing where you couldn't buy it online. You had to buy it in shops. So what they would do, End would put it on their website and they would say like, oh, you can't buy it. You have to go into the shop just so that they could look like they stocked Bape and they would try and get people in. But what you could do, you could go on their live chat and be like, hey, you know that Bape thing? Can I just buy it, please? And then they would be like, yeah, sure. And they'll like do it on the sly for you. And they basically got caught out doing that. And now they're not allowed to stock Bape for being naughty boys. So uh, yeah, slap on the wrist for them. Uh, someone has to make Nike Lab ACG since Nike won't. Um, yeah, could, could I be the one? Could I start making Nike Lab ACG products? Antoine Lab ACG. Confirmed. I'm going to do it. Yes, Carl. Base gang. Um, what football club do you support? I'm, I'm not really not really into football. When I was a kid, I used to support Arsenal because I, cause I, like, my cool friends liked Arsenal. So therefore, I thought I would be cool. But yeah, I don't really have any affiliation. Um, where do I live? I live just north of London. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice enough place. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty close to London, so it's quite easy to, to get into. Um, are we going to see more brands get into game aware products and bleed into techware? I think that's kind of happening to an extent. There was like Call of Duty merchandise, not, it was maybe like a year ago or something that had like some techware related things. And as we saw earlier, there's the, the Red Bull merch is like a little bit tech related and they've got a load of esports stuff as well. Um, there's also uh, Meta Clothing as well. It's again, it's another like gamer merch brand, but they're a little bit more kind of technical, I suppose. Um, I feel like there was a, an interesting question that I saw somewhere and then I missed it somewhere. Um, have I ever shopped from Wellgosh? Yeah, so I think I have one or two times. So Wellgosh are, Wellgosh are good in that they sometimes stock and will have sales on products that, other people don't really because they're mostly a UK footwear retailer but they also do clothes as well 
Um, so they have a couple of different brands. So they do Cavan, for example. The thing, the bad thing about Wellgosh is I think their product photography is not very good. It actually looks a bit better now, but they used to, like, I swear they had their white balance wrong in, like, every single photo because it made everything look bluer than it was. It was really stupid. But anyway, I've bought some some uh, some on-sale Cavan from them before. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend them. Um, yeah, they seem like a different different thing. Uh, about Kim Ye style, I don't know what that means, I'm afraid. I have no idea. Um, <clears throat> but the, the Yeezy clothing stuff, I actually think, is, is decent. Uh, am I full-time YouTube? No, I'm not. So I, I have a full-time job, and this is like on the side, as it were. It doesn't really make very much profit, if any, because I spend all of it on either gear or clothing that I use to do reviews. So I, I probably could, if I was really desperate... I probably could just about make this full time, but I would have to be like not really buying any clothing. I would just be like doing previews and like clothing collections and like what I think about X, Y, Z, which I don't think would be as good content. I would rather spend the money like buying things that other people maybe don't get a chance to look at because they only stock it online or whatever. Um, and I would have to do more sponsored content as well. And I kind of like the level that it's at. I like that at the moment, most stuff is not sponsored, but it's just the occasional one that kind of keeps everything ticking over. Um, and I, I think you guys kind of feel that way as, as well. Because, um, yeah, I, I, I hope that you would let me know if you felt that things were, like, too overly sponsored, but I think it's, I think it's all good. Um, ah, thank you, Intron, for the, for the donation. It's much appreciated. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, enjoy putting the kids to bed. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you soon, I'm sure. Um, Kanye and Kim, Kardashian, and Kim Kardashian, any alternatives? Oh, to that kind of style. Um, well, Kanye is kind of an interesting one because a lot of the time he wears like a very normal clothes. So he'll wear a lot of like, like he's been wearing like loads of Gildan hoodies and stuff before. So yeah, like as, um, as Bryce says, like earth tone stuff, oversized things. Um, for the high fashion alternative, Haida Ackerman, he's won a lot of their stuff before. Um, and yeah, the Yeezy season stuff, obviously. But yeah, just like oversized, comfy clothing. And, you know, you get that long line t-shirt, you mix that with a little sweater or something. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a, an easy enough style to do differently. Uh, Verti, I think Snow Peak is really cool. I like Snow Peak a lot. I've not bought anything from them, but I've only heard good things about them, so... Uh, good stuff. I like how, yeah, it's it's definitely a Japanese take on the the hiker style. Uh, so I like that. <laughs> Etty says, get that coin. I'm trying to stack that paper where I can, for sure. Um, uh, did I miss something? Yeah, um, I, I kind of uh, agree on the, the selling out to the max thing. A lot of people do, like, <laughs> you, you guys never see, like, the, the behind the scenes, as it were, but I probably reject like, I would say like 80%, I'd say, of like sponsorship requests and emails and stuff because I don't think it's appropriate. So I probably am at the point where if I wanted every video could have a different sponsor and I would be making, you know, be making money on every single video. Um, but I would just rather not do that because I think both in, in the kind of uh, non-selfish way because... I don't think it's the best content if you guys always have to like sit through sponsored stuff that isn't relevant. I only want to do the sponsored stuff that is relevant and I think has value. And in a more selfish way, I think it would hurt the channel long term if I'm doing all this sponsored content because then people are like, oh, like I have to sit through all this sponsored content. I'd rather just not watch. So yeah, I want to get that balance basically. Um, Marius, thank you so much for the, the one euro and then doubling down on the... Uh, on the on the on the extra donation so um snakey not snake i don't know how i don't know what that means maybe that's something that i pronounced wrong but uh anyway thank you so much for your support it's much appreciated and uh thank you david as well with the cute pear sticker i'm not gonna lie i have no idea what that currency is but thank you so much anyways um and yeah thanks hetty um yeah, that's that's kind of what I want. It's it's the relevancy for me that's the the big one, because yeah, like I I feel an obligation to protect you guys. 
So I don't want to just like expose you to any old random shit. I kind of want to like do my due diligence as it were and, and only do things that I think have some value. Um, I'm probably not going to play Resident Evil 3. I've never really been into the series. I do play quite a few different games, but yeah, that's it's not really the one for me. Um, I play a lot of multiplayer stuff now at the moment. Um, is the William Gibson Buzz Ricks and MA1 jacket techwear? Yeah, definitely. I mean, William Gibson is a, a known acronym fan, and I'm sure um, the the Buzz Ricks and stuff um, that that he talks about in in those novels is definitely, if not inspired by that by acronym, then definitely like his his love of acronym and his inclusion of, of the Buzz Ricks and stuff in the novels are definitely related in that way. And yeah, there's loads of cool outfit pics of uh, of um, of William Gibson wearing that stuff. Um, Catch the later, Grease. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, next big purchase. Oh, right, right. Sorry. Yeah, I was um, yeah, I was getting confused by the pronunciation. Yeah, so the correct pronunciation is Nike, not Nike, because um, it's named after the Greek goddess. Uh, so yeah, thank you, thank you for the clarification. Yeah, um, and yes, it is pronounced Nike. That is the that's the officially correct way. Um, cold Laundry. Cold Laundry have some drama surrounding them at the moment. Killer Keemstar drama alert right now on the Cold Laundry. Um, so, I don't know if you guys know about... I'm not even going to... I'm not going to put them up. I'm not going to give them the exposure. But they're basically like a trash brand who... They got really popular and really hyped for doing these like oversized puffer jackets. And then it transpired that all they were doing was... Guess what? Drop shipping stuff off Taobao. And they were taking these things that cost like 20 quid or something marking them up to about, I think 160, 170 pounds. So like nearly a 10 times markup and then just shipping them. And as always happens with these brands, they stop shipping orders and they stop responding to customers and whatever. There's a fly in my room. And, uh, and then the, the company officially folded as well. And then they started up again under a very similar name. So yeah, basically shitty brand do not support. Um, and yeah, there's there's some drama in there for sure. And yeah, they were also spotted like they would buy stuff off Taobao and then stick their own label in it, but like over the top of the original Taobao brand one. So you could like look under the, the label and there'd be another brand. Like, are you kidding me? Are you that lazy? Like, what is the deal? Just, ugh. I don't know how you can set up a brand like that and put like so much into it and then just like not actually create any product, just like re, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, what can I say about Russian techwear? Um, I don't know how many brands there are. There's, um, uh, what are they, Krakatau is the big one, and there's those guys that did the core stuff. What is that called? Can't remember. Yeah, I'm, I'm not like massive on, on all that stuff. I know a lot more about Riot Division, which is Ukrainian rather than Russian. But yeah, I know there's, there's definitely that kind of uh, sub-genre, I suppose, of, of the Russian stuff. Um, oh, thank you, thank you, Ben, for the the kind words. Maybe maybe you'll get into it at some point. But I want to try and cover some non-tech wear stuff as well and kind of expand things a little bit. Um, and yeah, do do some non-tech wear, do some like tech wear adjacent. Code Red, yes, Holden, that is the brand. That is the brand. Uh, yeah, you came back, Slack. Just for me roasting cold laundry. Uh, who's going to be next on the roasting list? Who have we done? We've done Uniden. We've done uh, we've done Volback. We've done cold laundry. Who's going to be next? Um, have I heard? <laughs> yeah, have I heard of the brand Volback? Yeah, we, we spoke about Volback a little bit earlier. Um, am I going to embrace the awesome college professor gray hair you have? Yeah, I mean, I have no choice but to embrace this. I could, like, dye it, I suppose. But the thing is, you guys have all seen this now. So if I suddenly rock up one day to stream and I've suddenly got all black hair, then you guys are going to be like, wait a second. So I can't lie. It's too late. I can't do anything. <laughs> so I've just got to deal with it now. So, I mean, hopefully, it, I, I don't think it looks too bad. It just makes me, yeah, it just makes me look a bit of a college professor. Maybe I'll go grey at the front or something, and I can be like Rogue from X Men, except without the cool powers. Um, or maybe I should just dye the whole thing grey. Who knows? Um, what's my opinion on the latest Krakatoa collection? Um, 
I, oh, also, uh, Ali Hussein, I see you've asked that a couple of times now. So let's, uh, Raven, Fjall Raven 8, or, yeah, number 8, Fjall Raven number 8, all oh, right. Um, Fjall Raven are not really, they're kind of not the brand for me, as it were, because it's, it's very kind of outdoorsy, it's quite traditional, um, but I know they've got some good stuff. I know it's like decent products and I've kind of seen them in hand and they've been like nice quality things. So let's get this back on the screen. So what do we think about this chaps? It's, this is definitely on the like the hiker core side of the spectrum, isn't it? But I think it's not an uncool product. I like that quarter zip. It's got that a kind of cool retro style, but a bit more of a modern take on it. Um, but yeah, it's, it certainly doesn't fit into the, the aesthetic of a lot of these kinds of, uh, kind of brands I talk about on the channel. But it, it definitely has some merits. And I think Fjall Raven as a brand as well, it goes far beyond the Kanken backpacks that have been like worn to death and absolutely played out. It's absolutely a legitimate brand with a good heritage. They make decent quality stuff and it's all high performance gear as well. So if you're more into the kind of like functional aesthetic performance gear, then they're definitely a good brand to check out. I can't remember, they're Scandinavian brand, aren't they? I can't remember what country. Sweden, I wanna say. It's my my bet. Uh, opinions on Rick Owens stuff. I think Rick Owens is very cool, Edward. I like Rick Owens a lot. I have on multiple occasions considered buying Rick Owens stuff and I probably will at some point. Um, I like the, the Astaire's, I think they're called, the pants. Uh, uh, I probably spelled that wrong. Are these going to take me to the right ones? No, they're not. But, but I've already got, I've got a pair of Rick Owen shoes already. Um, I can't even remember what they're called now. My mind's gone blank. Um, but yeah, these are, these are the Astaire's. So they're like, oh, you're not even going to show me a picture? Fine. But yeah, they're the, um, they're like a straight cut. They're kind of a bit smarter. They're super wearable. They come in a cropped version as well. So yeah, there's some there's some good stuff. Like Rick Owens have a whole bunch of stuff and I think in general, he's a great designer. Um, stood the test of time. I think he's done a very good job of having that very cohesive aesthetic whilst also having a big variety in those products. So yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of good things um, about them for sure. Favorite Super Mario game? I think Odyssey is great. I know it's like the most recent one, so why would I not say that? But yeah, I think Odyssey is sick. Um, there's there's a lot to do. I think the the speed running potential and like the competitive side is really cool. It's mechanically a very easy game to pick up, but it's like really complex at the same time. Like there's so many interesting mechanics. I think it works so well on Switch as well because you can play it in like two minute bursts. You can like get one star really, really quickly or one, um, what are they called? Moons in that game. You can get the moons really, really quickly, but you can sit down and play it for a while as well. Um, yeah. Uh, Fui won on Fon Levy ordered six of their pieces. That is quite the order, but I hope you like it because I've got quite a few on Fon Levy things now and I've been pretty happy with all those pieces. Um, so yeah, I, I'm sure you've made some good choices there. Uh, Matt says roast Holy Grail. Should we have a, should we have a look at Holy Grail? Holy Grail Techware. So, oh look, here we go. And we've got, we've got, this is Antoine. Some, some vintage This Is Antoine videos from two years ago. So yeah, I talked about Holy Grail uh, a while ago. Um, oh yeah, so it's part of YK Seuss, isn't it? Oh, uh, okay. Go away. That's weird. So we're not gonna go back on that website because it was like really messed up. But uh, we'll search for the pants because, and also, I'm sorry if that like that noise came through because that was really loud for me. So I'm gonna mute that desktop audio so that doesn't happen again. Um, yeah, so we're looking at these. I mean, it's a, this is this is peak techwear. You can't get any better than this, folks. Uh, we're not gonna get. Can we get a big picture of this? Can we get this bigger? Yeah, I mean, it's got straps. You can carry all your snacks in there. It's you can tighten this up. You can. You can cut off the blood supply to your legs if you want. You've got ones here. So, you know, if walking is too easy, you just want to trip up every other step, then holy grail, they've got you covered. And um, yeah, you know, they got, I don't know, is this like mesh or something? Uh, ooh, yeah, you can undo those buckles so you can have them hanging down. I mean, what's what's not to like here, ladies and gentlemen, it's got them all. And also they're, uh, 
They're like eight times too long as well, you can tell, because they're stacking up ridiculously. So if you're about eight feet high, then, uh, then these will be perfect for you. I'm sure they'll fit really well. But unfortunately, if you're not, then they're going to stack and they're going to end up looking pretty awful. Naming and shaming things about counterfeits. Um, yeah, I've, as I say, I've, I've never really bought uh, any fake stuff. And, oh, someone asked actually earlier about like the, whether like really high quality fakes being like a threat to the industry or something. I think buying any fake stuff is bad in general and I wouldn't recommend doing it. Like I know people like to kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm buying reps or whatever. Like they call it reps and not fakes because like that makes them feel better about themselves or whatever. Um, yeah, I just, I just feel like if you're not willing to buy the real thing, if you're not willing to support that designer and get the actual product and something that's made with the right performance materials, especially in techwear, like that's when this stuff is super important of getting like the, the materials and the design expertise and stuff. If you're not getting that, then why exactly are you buying the product? It's basically because you want to look like you own that thing when actually you don't. So it maybe speaks to uh, a bigger problem. Maybe it speaks to people who don't don't really feel secure, I suppose, in in what they're wearing and they feel the need to like appear to be wearing like they're wearing something that they're not. So I would say like rather than buying a fake version of something else, just look for something that's within that price range that you are looking at that is like the real thing or, or is a, a better better option like there are cheaper equivalents to acronym for example there are lots of brands out there that do technical clothing um so yeah there's there's lots of lots of alternatives lots of things you can do and purchasing purchasing things second hand as well um and then you're getting the real deal but you're getting it cheaper yeah could do the whole head platinum i think though because the rest of my hair is so dark it would be like really bad for the hair to to try and do it all do it all real white uh yeah probably probably wouldn't work yeah 200 dollars for those holy grail pants ladies and gentlemen that's uh that's a lot hmm um yeah built in built in tourniquet on there <laughs> i missed the prize i'm only just seeing the chat now <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, sorry everyone yeah i could have got a free iphone 4 or whatever it probably was um yeah yeah so there, there's definitely an interesting discussion around fakes and stuff and yeah like buying fake jordans versus paying money to someone who bought it to get them yeah i the the whole reseller culture is also kind of not really something that i approve of either because it's you know it's again it's you're not adding value by buying something just for the sake of like selling it on. What value is that person providing to the market? Because you're not making anything. You're not making that product more available or sending it to a new market. You're just making it less available for the people that actually want it. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit, it's a bit lame. But then on the other hand, it's people doing things like reselling that generate that high level of demand. Um, because if you didn't have people that were trying to like buy things just so they could sell them on or whatever, then you wouldn't have that kind of hype around products. And, and that is what like draws people to some stuff. And like, I can't lie, you know, I think the acronym Presto is a really cool. And there's definitely an element of that is because they are a, a kind of hyped shoe and they're like, people recognize them and they're really cool, especially something like the lavas when they're so bright. So yeah, there's... It's a difficult one. Personally, it's it's never something that I would do. I just feel like there are so many shoes that out there on the that are out there on the market that if it's like if there's a shoe that's three thousand dollars, then it's like, you know what, maybe I don't like it enough to spend three thousand dollars on it and I just won't buy it and I'll go buy something else. Um, but yeah, that's that's my my feeling on that. Um yeah, the the on fun levy thing. On fun levy's drawn a lot of criticism as being acronym ripoffs, even though they make high quality products in technical fabrics. Is it right to buy on fun levy? I think if you if you ask some people, they will say no, and that's on the basis that there are one or two products that are derivative of acronym stuff, um, and that's that's not untrue. So, for example, if you look at the uh, yeah, if you look at the Amez 2, let me just go back to the other side. 
Uh, are these going to be the new ones? No, these are the old ones. So we're going to do a quick back and forth comparison here. So if we look at the yeah, 14 ms 2s and then we look at acronym P30 ADS, scrolling back past my own videos again. So let's have a little look. Now I don't have an easy way of doing a side by side comparison. So if we have a look, can we get a pocket close up? Yeah, so we see this pocket design here. What we have is a reversed zip that's kind of on the back of, oh, you can see my mouse. So that's on the back of this little section here, there's like a reversed zip. And that's like, it's kind of semi floating. So it's attached on one side. And they came out with that first. And afterwards, we see here, this looks very similar, right? So in my mind, there is almost no way that Anton Levy just came up with this of their own accord. And, you know, they made this and then they were suddenly like, oh, whoopsie, it's the same as the acronym. There is, yeah, it's almost certain that they saw this design. They thought, oh, it would be quite cool if, if we used a, a very similar sort of thing on our pants. So, yeah, they, they do that. They do that for sure. I can't deny that. But I think to... Um, to say that they're like a kind of, they're a derivative brand or they don't have any original ideas or whatever. Um, because of things like that, I think that's definitely, it's too reactionary and I think it's oversimplifying the matter. And I think there are many, many products that are not designed uh, like as derivative versions of acronym products. Like, is there an acronym version of this? No. They have acronym jackets that have Texas webbing on, yes, but they don't look the same as this and they're not in that color, they're not in that material. Um, you know, is that styled after an acronym jacket? No. Um, is this? No. Is that hoodie? No. Is the is the Lahore shirt jacket? No, this is something totally different. So yeah, I, I think they do enough that is their own designs. Are they like cutting from the same you know, is it within the same sphere as a brand like Acronym? Yes, um, absolutely. And are they trying to appeal to people that like Acronym but don't want to spend a thousand pounds on a pair of pants and want to spend, you know, 300 pounds on a pair of pants but get the same products or, or the same kind of materials and stuff? Um, yeah, they absolutely do that. However, the end result they, in, in my opinion, and I own probably six or seven on Fond Levy things, I think they make good products. And, and as you say, Fui, the, the idea of getting made to order stuff, made to measure things um, in a variety of different materials, I think that's really valuable. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. So yeah, I, I don't think they are um, like a, a fully derivative brand. I don't think that you should not support them. I do think they have products that are worth buying. I think they have cool looking things. Um, so I realize some people are not gonna like that opinion or whatever, but that's that's the way I feel about it. And I personally am happy continuing to talk about On Fun Levy on this channel. Um, and I'm happy to talk about acronym as well on this channel. You know, I, I'm an acronym buyer and I own acronym products and I own On Fun Levy products. So, you know, I like both. And, uh, and yeah, Damien, nothing in design is new. There's um, there's always that filtering process in that maybe a brand like Acronym are the guys who are truly innovating and doing a hundred different versions of things and then coming out with something. Then you get kind of one tier down, you've got Enfant Leve and they take um, those kind of designs, they iterate on that, they make it a bit different, they bring it down to uh, a more mainstream market. Then another brand sees that, it gets filtered down and again and again and again, that's kind of the way that this kind of thing works. Um, any alternatives to the P23, P30, P25s? Um, yeah, I mean, on Fun Levy have the, the Escu. Um, again, it's not the same cut, but it's not dissimilar. And if you like that wide style, then that's probably like the next best thing. Because I don't think uh, an Aldats as well, which, which I've got. But yeah, the Escus, yeah, they're not dissimilar. I wish that they were wider, honestly. Um, I think they could go even further with it. But yeah, they've got some of the same styling um, but yeah there's not that many brands that are doing like a technical product in the the potion seller pants so it's very much an acronym thing but yeah i would definitely recommend the p30s i i i bought them in medium which were way too small before return them now i've got the xl and i wear them quite a lot so uh so yeah i think they're really cool
Ah, Elliot buying the the fake P tens. Um, but yeah, good to hear that you you ended up buying the real version. And yeah, I, I think you will always notice the difference between a real product and a fake one. So it's it's always worth getting the the real stuff. I think. Um, yeah, and, and Slack definitely agree on the Stoneline and Shadow Project stuff as well. We've seen uh, 30%, sometimes even 50% sales as well on, on recent stuff. <clears throat> and yeah, Joey, they, they, uh, on the Amez 2s, the articulation is almost the same as on the, uh, the acronym P10. So, um, so yeah, that, that is a, a similar thing for sure. Um, Inia, what about other UK? They are, they're basically just a streetwear brand. So I've got nothing against them for sure. But yeah, they're, they're not doing anything too wild. Um, but yeah, they've got some kind of like retro windbreakers and stuff from memory. So yeah, they're, they're okay. They're relatively affordable as well. They don't do anything that's too expensive. <laughs> Inquisitors, I'm on the, the fake on von Levo website with a backwards logo. Um, yeah, Scott, like, is it wrong to be a fan of the Beatles and hate every brand, every band that's taken inspiration from the Beatles? I guess, yeah, it's, it's not a dissimilar thing. I think, I think there's no reason why you can't like all of that stuff. Um, how old does acronym have to be until basic designs like pockets become normal for people to come in? Yeah, that's, that's another point. And there's a lot of things as well that acronym have not come up with themselves, but taken from like military designs and then repurposed them into like a high fashion luxury product. Um, Angela, my day has been very good. Thank you. I've had a nice little day. I played some Animal Crossing. I set up for the stream, and now here we are chilling and having a good time. So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's all good. I can't complain, and I hope you are having a great day as well. Um, brands, I think best leverage merino. Um, I don't have a massive experience with merino, to be honest. Um, I've got a couple of valence frame tees, which I really really like. They're merino, and I'm a big fan of those. And I would definitely buy more merino products on that basis. Um, I hear merino underwear is really nice as well, so I'd like to pick up some stuff like that. But uh, are you going to see an, uh, an underwear review from me? I very much doubt you want to see me with my kit off, so that's probably a no, but uh, who knows? Maybe if the OnlyFans career takes off, then you'll see some underwear pics. <clears throat> yeah, Slack, P30 gang. Loads of people have picked up P30s recently. Since the restock, the kind of pre-SS20 restock, loads of people have, have bitten the uh, bitten the bullet, as it were, and gone for P30s. And I think people have been really happy with them. Uh, thoughts on Minimal. Ah, oh, another brand. Another brand I can roast. So Minimal are one of those brands that basically have absolutely no identity of their own, to my understanding. And like everything they do is basically just like a rip off of other things that exist. So yeah, I mean, they're out here doing the like skin tight ripped jeans and stuff. I mean, yeah, like when, when we're ripped jeans, like 2016, I think these were maybe big. Um, yeah, this is the kind of brand that I see advertised on my Instagram a lot. And it's always got models that are like really beefy wearing t-shirts that are like two sizes too small for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to just buy basics, <clears throat> like, yeah, sure, probably fine, probably all right. But yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't pretend like they're doing anything innovative. It's basically a fast fashion brand to my mind. So yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't buy from them. I don't think, because I think in every case, it's kind of like, oh, well, this looks like a John Elliott design or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's another H and M. It's very similar to H&M. Um, yeah, that's what I've got to say. Uh, Rick Owens incorporated into techwear. I think some people would hate that idea. I personally have nothing against it. I think there are definitely some similar elements there. And I think there are definitely some cool ways that those things could be incorporated together. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a brand that I would like to experience and, and to get a bit more... Yeah, to get some more pieces from, basically, because I think it could be worked in really effectively, especially with like, you know, there's a lot of things in techwear that have interesting silhouettes, like the P30s, for example, with that oversized look. And um, yeah, you know, Rick Owens have loads of like interestingly proportioned things as well. So I'm sure there's things that could work together really nicely. So yeah, I see no reason why not, personally, even though, you know, do Rick Owens make technical products? 
you know, a lot of it, no. But I don't think that always matters. <clears throat> Uh, a lot of minimal stuff is actually Taobao. That does not surprise me in the least. Um, yeah, like kind of based on these sorts of prices and because they're not like a super mainstream brand, yeah, they're probably just sourcing it off Taobao and then selling it again. So yeah, that's, that's how it works. Uh, kind of surprised Techware doesn't have any presence on Mastrop. There have been one or two brands, I think, that have launched products on Mastrop. Um, and yeah, it definitely speaks to that community. The... Uh, the, the kind of everyday carry type thing of everyone clubbing together and then buying like the latest drop of the bag or something. It makes it easier for suppliers as well, making things in smaller quantities. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised as well. Um, thoughts on the Samurai Pocket Riot Division pants. Um, I much prefer the four pocket ones to the Samurai ones from memory. I think the Samurai ones are like a little bit too much for me if they're the ones I'm thinking of. Because they've got like the big flappy pockets. And yeah, I'm not, not super big on that. Um, Matt, we, we had the Holy Grail roasting session already with the uh, the $200 strappy pants. I will say actually though, um, that brand, uh, YK, uh, was it YK Seuss? I think it is. But they do these like, like tech wear helmet things and they look really crazy. And those actually look like a really cool product. It's it's a hundred percent costume. It looks like a costume, but it's um they actually look like super cyberpunky and cool. So I'm kind of behind those. But yeah, the rest of the products are like are very different to that. We're running out of water out here. Make sure you're staying hydrated in uh, in these times. Look, we've been through we've been through fluids out here. I've got a liter in me. Staying hydrated. It's hard as well with the. I'm trying to talk constantly. <clears throat> but we out here. We out here doing it. What do I think of the Orbit Gear W001? That is a good question. Let's have a look. Uh, ah, yeah. So Orbit Gear are doing jackets and stuff now. So this looks a little bit like the brand L House, which are... Oh, yeah. Machine 56. Machine 56. That is the one. I was getting it confused. Yeah. Machine 56 are the guys that do the helmets. Uh, yeah, I would look up that stuff because it's it's really crazy looking and I'm definitely a fan of it. Looks great, but uh, yeah, would I buy it? No, it's like a display piece basically. I, I would just, I display it for, yeah, I, I buy it for display reasons. Um, yeah, I mean, this looks, it looks okay. Looks okay to me. Um, I certainly think because this is like along the more affordable side of the spectrum. I think there are definitely far worse things that you could buy um, than this. It's got, oh, that, those straps are cute, aren't they? They've got the little Orbit gear straps. That's fun. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's probably one of those things where you get what you pay for. Like it's, it's $200. It's not crazy money. It's probably not going to be as good as more expensive techwear products. But it's cheaper than those. So... Um, but yeah, probably okay. Uh, what do I think about the Asian techwear community, uh, like in Vietnam? I don't know too much about that, to be honest. From my understanding, well, I guess it's it's very different in that you're not going to have the kind of like high performance wet weather gear, so it's going to be very different in that respect and a lot more lightweight stuff. But I'm sure it's it's probably a, a very different look and uh, and some different brands that probably we don't really get over here. But yeah, I agree, Scott. If you buy one, you got to wear it for the gram. There's no doubt about that. No doubt at all. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you big cyberpunk vibes. I don't even know if you can see through them, though. So did I take a look at the stuff from Coded? Yeah, so if his website is even Googleable. Yeah, there we go. So he came out recently with these very high specification bags. Can I just, oh, okay, so I have to click on one of these big pictures. View. Yeah, so this is a very, very high spec and very, very labor intensive bag that, um, that Chris has come out with. And it's supposed to just, as you can see from this quick video here, it's like super multifunctional and there's loads of different things that you could do with it. Um, and yeah, like loads of carrying capacity, very clearly thought out, um, a really interesting design. So, uh, in fact, is that one of the Machine 56 helmets that we were talking about? 
I think it actually might be. Um, but yeah, so these look like a really interesting product. And yeah, as it says here, construction time 23 hours per bag. So when you buy one of these, you are literally paying Chris to spend 23 hours with 60 different bits making you one of these bags. That is pretty mad. That is pretty mad. Um, but very cool. I think it's a very interesting product. It's certainly not one for many consumers, for, for your kind of mainstream consumer, I suppose, because because of its specification and because of its price as well, it's very expensive. But yeah, it's it's definitely like a high tier uh, carry item. And yeah, the I think there's been a couple of people so far that have purchased them and they've been very happy with it and they've liked it a lot. Um, so yeah, very cool product for sure. Uh, Gorilla Group opinion. Yeah, I think I think Gorilla Group are a cool brand. I like them. I, I like as well that they have been willing to experiment and, and to do different things because I think a lot of the, the kind of derivative affordable techwear brands kind of started ripping on Gorilla Group and, and the products that they use to make their name. So Gorilla Group have now totally changed things up and they're making things quite different. So they're taking inspiration from like 80s and 90s stuff now and like this kind of retro futuristic stuff. And I definitely have, have respect for that because it's differentiating them and it makes them makes the products that they do different to everything else on the market. And I've been, you know, I've been fairly happy with my stuff from Gorilla Group. Um, yeah, I've, I've got nothing bad to say. And, you know, some of those things I'm still wearing now, even though I've had them for several years. Like, I've got that natural disaster jacket, that green one, which I think looks really, really cool. I think it's a really interesting piece. In fact, that was on the last picture. Going back to Jack Eel for a sec there. Yeah, so that was my first Gorilla Group piece that green jacket there. And I still really like it. I think it's great. It's quite big on me now. It's it's very much oversized because this is a large. I normally wear medium now in jackets. But yeah, I, I think they do good products. So I'm a fan of Gorilla Group. Uh, did I ever talk about Black Taylor? Yeah, they, they're another dropshipper. So you'll find the same stuff from Black Taylor as you will from all those other brands that do uh, that do all those same Taobao products. Um, and yeah, someone else just said as well, I just saw uh, like not to buy from them because they've been to them before. Yeah, blank S um, had a bad experience there. So yeah, pretty much par for the course. Um, yeah, so sorry, sorry to hear about that. Um, ordering two pairs of pants and then yeah, like not doing very well in terms of quality. So yeah, that's a bit of a shame. So uh, sorry about that. What do I think about Li Ning and Jackie Chan collab? I didn't know they did the, a Jackie Chan collab. That's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, Li Ning are a, are a strange brand. Um, it seemed like they kind of suddenly came out of nowhere. Like, I don't know if anyone knows anything that I don't, but I feel like I had never heard of this brand and then suddenly like their shoes are like all over the place. Um, maybe Instagram will give us a better... So yeah, they're, they're kind of doing a lot of these like retro chunky shoes and stuff. I feel like a lot of them are not quite for me, but they've got one or two decent products. It looks like they're working with Gore-Tex as well, as you can see by this absolutely massive logo. Um, so if you like repping Gore-Tex, that's the one for you. I mean, look at that. Gore-Tex Infinium, you'd never guess, would you? Uh, but yeah, they've got some interesting products, but I don't really know too much about the brand. I don't know if they're like really new or something, or if they've just started getting popular or... Or what, but yeah, they've they've got some some interesting stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, older Gorilla Group is definitely the best alternative to the Rain Delusion Stephen cargos. Uh, that or maybe like older Nike Lab ACG as well. Um, yeah, glad you like the uh, Gorilla Group stuff, Aiden. Uh, and yeah, free mask as well. Um, which is pretty cool. They were shipping out free masks with all the orders based on uh, the current coronavirus stuff, which is pretty, pretty cool. And I think they said, uh, they specifically said like, we're not going to sell them. So don't ask basically, which I think is cool. You know, give that stuff away, give that stuff away for free. Uh, will I ever get a tattoo? How do you know I don't already have a tattoo? I might just have one somewhere that you've never seen. Um, no, I don't have a tattoo. I'm not 100% against it, but I'm too indecisive. Like based on, you know, if you look at what I was wearing three years ago, in fact, we can do the, we can do the Instagram time hop. Did I just get rid of my, yeah, I did. Uh, no, I didn't. Yeah, so it was this one. So if we go back, 
we go back like three years, for example, and we see like what I was dressing like, what I was looking like, etc. Um, so yeah, we go back to like, you know, way less good outfits in my opinion. Like this is <sighs> dark times. This was not a good outfit. But yeah, I'm like, I like stuff like that then and I thought that was cool. So if I got a tattoo then and I thought the tattoo was cool then, or what am I going to think now? Unless, of course, it's a big Gore-Tex logo tattoo. So maybe I should just do that. Get it on the chest. The Gore-Tex sponsorship coming in hot. And then uh, maybe I'll get that sweet hookup one day. Maybe Gore-Tex will start sponsoring me. Who knows? Or maybe like Gore-Tex face tattoo. I could be like a SoundCloud rapper, but with like performance materials instead. Or maybe like the acronym, you know, the uh, like the geometric pattern, like down one side. That'd be pretty cool, right? How many different tech wear tattoos can we come up with? I think think we're quite limited. Uh, thoughts on MXDVS? It's not really for me. It's not for me. It's a bit costumey. It's a bit hashtag tech wear. It's a bit too much for me. Of the, the kind of most similar brand that I like a lot more is Alpha Motif because it's kind of like a slightly more restrained version of MXDVS, um, and I think, although like some of the MXDVS products in themselves I think are fine, I think they're kind of associated with the hashtag techwear sort of LARPing gear a little bit too much for me to really like. <laughs> can feel the cringe through the screen. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we've got SpongeBob just chilling. We've had some good stuff. But yeah, if you if you go back far enough, I don't know why I'm showing you guys these things. I should hide all these things, to be honest. But like, you know, these were before the techwear times. Here I am out here, out in the field with my with my jeans, re, with my ultra boosts. I mean, this is it's dated, isn't it? It's a little bit of a dated look, and it's just it's just not me that much anymore. Um, and yeah, I used to <clears throat> when I started getting into fashion, I thought like. Yeah, APC, like that's that's a really cool brand that speaks to me because it's like really easy to wear. Um, it doesn't, it's not too like crazy. I, n I never really liked logos very much and APC stuff tends not to have that many logos. So I was like, yeah, that's the brand for me. But it's just not very exciting clothing and I really wanted to do kind of more and I wanted to, like when I was wearing APC, I didn't really feel super cool, you know? So that was, that was part of the point where I wanted to change up my style and to start doing different things. And then you can see, not that long after, here I am in my like awkwardly posed tech wear gear. So there we go. Uh, yeah, I could get Errolson's face tattooed on my face. That would be a good idea. Or maybe Errolson's head, like if I shave my head and get Errolson's head there, then when I like pose an outfit fix, I can just, I can put my head down like that and then it will look like Errolson, but it's me instead. How great will that be? Maybe I can clean up on Instagram if I do that. Uh, a couple of people mentioning about branding. Uh, branding, yeah, about making a brand. Yeah, interesting. Interesting that you guys say that is all I'm going to say. Um, and I can't say more than that right now. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. I've got some more work to do in that front. But it's... Uh, it's on the cards, it's on the cards, but it's not gonna be merch, is what I'm gonna say. Um, because I feel like I would be doing myself an injustice, you know? If I was gonna do like, oh, you can all buy a This Is Antoine t-shirt, and it's just got like my face on it or something. I feel like I can do better than that, and I feel like I can make a product that's better than that, and something that people are actually going to want to buy a bit more. I, I would want to make something that people would want to buy because it's a decent product and it's at a decent price rather than just buying it because it's This Is Antoine merchandise, if that makes sense. Yeah, I know, Slag, we've, we've come far. We've come real far. I mean, I feel like for me, probably, I guess maybe about a year ago, like once we start getting to like this kind of point, this is where the outfits become good for me. Like, you know, this was, I still look back at this and I'm like, yeah, I really like that outfit. And I still wear this exact outfit and I think I look good in that. But it's once you start going too far past that, sorry, 
the it's the coke it's coming back um yeah it just it feels like i wasn't getting things quite right this was probably one of my i think that was one of my first like really good outfits that i that i really liked for me i think before that it's it's very hit and miss um and even now you know i'm not gonna pretend like i'm really amazing like all my outfits are like total fire or whatever like there's there's still work to be done i mean we attained perfection here this was the peak this was as good as it gets and then it uh it just it just goes down from there but i mean this is pretty amazing stuff we nailed it on this one you can can't you see the pain in my eyes <laughs> um yeah <laughs> loki want to get oh yeah Cavem tattoo that'd be sick um yeah alpine jacket i'm a big fan what i'd like to do at some point i'd quite like to do a kind of long-term review of the alpine jacket because i've owned it now for like what four years or something um so yeah i would like to talk about you know how do i feel about it from the perspective of somebody that's owned it for so long um because i think i've got a lot to say on on that side of things because it's a really good jacket and i like it a lot like it a lot like it a lot but it's not perfect so yeah 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 well so it's it's cool to see that there's some support for the idea of some uh <laughs> I'm talking, talking about the good Coca-Cola. Jesus. Um, yeah, it's 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 really cool to see that there's some support for the idea of uh, for some clothes, for some cool, not merch, but better than merch. Um, yeah, and and thank you, Joey. That's uh, that's very kind of you to say. I I'd certainly wanna yeah I'd certainly wanna do it justice, basically. Yeah, can't you see the pain in my eyes? Yeah, it's it probably is what I captioned the photo, yeah. Um, did I keep the acronym Poncho? I did, yeah, I still own it. So uh, I posted that, yeah, here we go. Uh, back in January, there I am wearing it. I do not wear it very much, I'm not going to lie. Um, so the cost per wear, not so hot on that one, that's for sure. But I don't really regret buying it because I think it's a very cool piece of clothing and I think it's really interesting. Um and that's something that I feel like this season was missing from Acronym. Like, they don't really have anything from this season that's really like, uh, you know, if we go back to the main page, they don't really have anything from this season that's like really crazy. That's really like, oh, they've never done something like that before, or that's a bit different to everything else. You know, they got a couple of jackets, a couple of pairs of trousers, a couple of mid-layer pieces. Like, when the most unusual thing is the, the sweater, which I would quite, you know, I'd be interested in buying this. I think that, yeah, it kind of says that Acronym are starting to do things a little bit differently now, which I think is a bit of a shame because I, I would have been well up for buying some weird bits. But it is what it is. Um, I, but I'm, I'm glad I bought that cape, even though I don't wear it that much because it's just a cool piece. Um, yeah, we, we looked at that Riot Division white stuff a little bit earlier. Um, yeah, I think there is some cool stuff there. What's the best year of fashion? My my knowledge of fashion historically, I don't think is good enough to really answer that question. But I think there's been, from, certainly from, from like a techwear perspective, like 2016 and 2017 were were like really big in, in the, the techwear era, I suppose. And that's when the real like classic techwear style was really kind of nailed down. Um, yeah, so that, that was when it was quite big. And I think things have changed from then. And I think, you know, is techwear as kind of hyped as it was at that point? Maybe not really, but I still think there's a lot to be done. And I still think there's a lot of innovation around there. But 2016 and 2017, I think, was not a great time for like the hype beast kind of culture. It was very, very centered around, uh, yeah, like off-white and big logos and stuff like that. The logo mania thing was real strong. And I think like that's dropping off now which is definitely a good thing. Ah, Commander Shepard. I recognize your name. A from Reddit and B from the Citadel. So uh, hello to both of you, both Commander Shepherds. Um, thank you for the uh, the nice words. So what do I call pants that are tapered and have a long elastic band at the ankle? I have a tapered elastic part, but I'm looking for that in cargoes. Um, long enough to be from ankle to about mid calf. I don't know what I don't know what you mean by a long oh um yeah they so that is so you can like 
cinch them upwards, I think, right? So you can like have them grip higher up the shin. I actually don't know what that's called specifically, but I think, I feel like Hamkus might have some. Um, that's the first thing that comes to mind. I'll see if I can see anything that's like my vision of, of what you're saying. And then, uh, and then we can see if that's it. Uh, check into case. Have we got, why is there not like a pants category? Am I being stupid? Because I mean, they do pants, so what's the deal here? Uh, all right, we'll just have to, we'll just scroll through these a little bit. Yeah, so this was like what I had, what I was kind of thinking, but it's not quite of what I was after. So yeah, these, you can see here at the back, they have this like, this thing here. And I think what that does, you can use this cord here to like cinch upwards and like pull the whole pan up into like a, a kind of three quarter length thing. I don't know if they'll actually show that here. No, it looks like they don't. But yeah, maybe that's what you're after. I'm not really sure. I don't know. But yeah, there's there's quite a few different like weird cinching mechanisms that are out there. Uh, Holden, when am I going to end the stream? That is a... I mean, I was supposed to end it like an hour ago, to be honest. Um... But, you know, I'm, I'm having a good time. We're just here chilling. So, But I'll tell you what, I am almost out of water and my throat is starting to get sore. So we probably run, won't run for a crazy more amount of time. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I kind of wanted to extend it a bit because it seemed like, you know, everyone, everyone's still here. Everyone's still chilling. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to continue on that basis. Um, but, I mean, if, if you've got to drop off early, then, then you crack on. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to force you to stay. Um... And the, I'll put the whole video up at the end. But yeah, I guess, yeah, Hezzy is just like adjustable length pants, maybe. Um, is this the age of non-techwear techwear? Um, yeah, I, I guess by that, it's the more sort of gray man stuff. I think there is definitely a market for that. And I think there's a lot of people that are interested in that, particularly as, um, yeah, a lot of brands are starting to move away from the tech ninja stuff that was so big a couple of years ago. But I think as well, it, yeah, it's just moving in a different direction. Like, you know, is Acronym putting out Grey Man stuff? Not really. They're still kind of doing their own thing. Valence is the kind of Grey Man in some respects, but I still think is more futuristic than that. So I think Grey Man definitely has its place. And I'm glad that there's more options out there. And I'm glad that brands like Outlier are doing well, because I think they're a really cool brand and I really like the way that they approach things. I've been really happy with pretty much everything that I've got from them. So, Yeah. Uh, a lot of good stuff from them. Um, want to enter the tech quest style? So this is from Rodolfo. Uh, doesn't want to spend tons of money on the clothes. What do I think about the Chinese brands like InShadow and Crotter? Yeah, so these are the, the Taobao brands that I refer to. Um, I don't think they are the best options. I think you're better off looking looking closer to home and looking at you know your Nikes, your North Faces, your Patagonias, your brands like that rather than those brands, simply because you'll get a better quality product at the end of the day. It might take a little bit of searching to find something that really has that futuristic or that kind of technical edge to it. Um, and also looking at the military surplus side of things as well. Um, so to give you an example, like uh, this, yeah, so these, this picture here, like this is not with any particularly expensive gear. Like these are mainline Nike shoes. These are Riot Division. The jacket was like 80 pounds uh, from Helicon. It's like a military retailer. And the holster thing, um, uh, that was a little bit more expensive, I think. But you know, that's that's kind of not obligatory. Um, so that's kind of the better way of doing it, I think, for me. Uh, do you like the idea of reviewing a subscriber's fits? I, I wouldn't 100% say no, but I don't want... <clears throat> I don't want to like roast people basically because I think it's a little bit mean. So I don't want to do that. So, uh, yeah, but I, I don't have an issue with doing it. I don't have an issue with like looking through different outfits and stuff. And if that's something that people want to see, then yeah, maybe I could do that. Or it maybe, maybe it would be more appropriate to do a kind of like, what are some of my kind of favorite recent tech wear outfits? And then that will be, 
that will get a good idea of like the techware landscape a little bit more and it will help introduce some different people who are putting out different kinds of outfits and different looks in different ways. Maybe that would be uh, a good way of doing it and then kind of mixing in some fan or some subscriber stuff as well. Uh, welcome Karma PT, just joining. Um, yeah, we've, uh, we've been going a good couple of hours now, so you can always have a look back. Uh, yeah, blank. The that's another thing with the Taobao brands. They also tend to come up really small. Best techniques for finding techwear secondhand. Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind. Uh, what am I trying to say? My brain is being destroyed now. By the end of the day, apparently, um, I don't really buy secondhand stuff that often. So I will have an occasional look. You know, I'll look through uh, places like John Flip occasionally and just see what's available. But it's more that if there's a particular item that I'm really after, like I really like the look of those P23, so then I was just kind of like waiting until one came up and then I bought them. So that's really the way that I shop for things, uh, secondhand at least. But I do want to start doing it a little bit more because it is a really good way of getting some nice stuff much cheaper. Uh, Carl, glad you're a good, uh, glad you're a fan of that idea um, for the format of doing some Instagram-based outfit stuff. So yeah, maybe that's uh, maybe that's something that I'll look a bit more into because it it wouldn't be a super difficult video to do because I always see outfits and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Like, uh, you know, there's definitely things that inspire me in all kinds of different ways. Uh, yeah, I do. Yes, I work in IT marketing. I suppose is my uh, official title. Yeah, I'm a I'm a marketing manager. Well, yeah, social media marketing manager, not quite overall marketing manager, but who knows, one day, one day. Um, yeah, some good suggestions from uh, in terms of getting stuff secondhand. Uh, eBay, I've never really used eBay for buying like high quality, uh, kind of more luxury products. Do I like wearing expensive clothes just to mog poor people? Yes, every day. That's the only reason I get up in the morning, just to flex. <laughs> yeah no i am um, yeah on, on that topic i've never really been one for for kind of flexing like i've never really been the kind of guy to like wear things just for the logo or just for the brand i mean i say that you know wanting to own acronym or whatever because you know i definitely subscribe to the idea that a brand is more than just the clothing that it puts out. And when you buy something like Acronym, you're buying into the brand's ethos, you're buying into everything it represents, you're buying into that kind of, the Acronym feeling, as it were. Um, and that is, you know, that's part of the value of a product. You know, if you're not just paying for the material with something like that. So yeah, I, I definitely think, you know, even though I don't wear heavily logoed products or whatever, um, yeah, I, I'm still, I'm not immune to that idea of products giving, like having a social weight to them or, or having some kind of social currency. You know, I I like Stone Island partly because it's a brand that's associated with cool material performance and interesting products, even though they're also associated with football hooliganism. And, uh, and I'm not much of a football hooligan, you know. I don't don't have the shaved head. You won't catch me at the Millwall away game. Um but yeah, so there's there's definitely that that kind of those two sides I suppose of it for me. Um, Mikatona, uh, sorry, I'm sorry you're confusing your wife on on my part. Uh, yeah, no, no worries, it's it's all good. Um, yeah, I find often like these random random questions will like spark something off in my brain. So uh, yeah, so it's all good, it's all good. Um, if I could pick five pants, what would I pick? So, acronym P30, Enfant Levy, and there's two, uh, Garuda Assassin pants, I reckon, as well. Um, Valence Voronoi, and I'm going to have to remind myself, I'm going to have to look back through the Instagram, uh, for the fifth pair. Uh... I mean, those four cover all the bases real well, I'll be honest. Um, yeah, I can't think of like a fifth essential pair for me because those are the ones that really get a lot of use at the moment and, and are big in my rotation. So yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with four out of five on that one. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say the P23s just because they, they fulfill a similar role to the P30s for me. 
Um, maybe woven pants. Maybe something that's like super comfy. Or maybe some, maybe just some, some like joggers or something for the fifth one. My wife left and took the kids. I'm sorry. Um, maybe you've got more money for tech wear now, though. So, you know, pros and cons, pros and cons. Didn't say ACG cargoes. So the thing is, I don't own the ACG cargoes anymore. I sold them um, because they ended up being a little bit too big for me. Even though they were the first cargoes I bought, I really liked them, got a lot of wear out of them. Um, yeah, I, I ended up getting rid of them. But I think the, the Enfant Leve and those two, I think they they fulfill that role. And I think they do a little bit of a better job. I prefer the dry skin material and I like the cargo pocket configuration a little bit better than I did on the ACG pants. So yeah, I, I actually prefer those. So that's why I kept them and I got rid of the ACG ones. Uh, yeah, thoughts about Arc'teryx? Uh, we talked about Arc'teryx a little bit before, but I'm a big Arc'teryx fan. I like it a lot. I've got a few valence pieces. I like those. I've got a few mainline pieces and I like those as well. So definitely a question. Question. I keep reading things and it makes me say that word uh, too easily influenced. Uh, but yeah, definitely a brand that I'm a fan of. Got some secondhand ACG shoes and feel like you've tapped into some vast unspeakable power. That's how it feels. That is how it feels. Um, yeah, I remember like the first real tech wear things I bought were the Alpine jacket and the ACG cargos. And like wearing those together, I remember being like, yeah, like this is tech wear. This is cool. Like we're doing it now. Like I remember feeling feeling real good about that. So yeah, there's there's definitely that. Yeah, there's definitely that thing. Um, Ali, we, we talked about the, the reviewing fans thing a little bit earlier. Um, but yeah, I, I would be potentially up for doing that. And I think there's some support for doing that. So that could be pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, do I wear really long socks? Yeah, I do. So uh, well-known fashion retailer Marks and Spencers, they do some great real high socks. So uh, those are normally the ones that I wear. So in fact, in that picture down there, those are the Marks and Spencers finest. But yeah, loads of brands do like over the calf or, or up to the knee socks. So just grab some of those. But yeah, you can do tights as well. Tights also works. Um, or like running leggings. There's lots of things there. Uh, how do I feel about cool tech wear with tactical stuff? Mm, yeah, nothing nothing wrong with the more, uh, the more like tactical side of things. Like I've got that Helicon jacket is very much a tactical product. And yeah, Arc'teryx Leaf is... Uh, very highly regarded, I know, um, particularly because they tend to take away their branding from a lot of their products and they're very like heavy duty things. So yeah, nothing wrong with that. I think uh, I think mixing in the tactical stuff and the, the tactical LARP is, uh, is definitely a good thing to do. And a lot of acronym designs are based originally on military surplus gear. So yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, Hetty, for, for stopping by. Much appreciated. Um, Oh, electrical blackout. Oh, fair enough. But uh, yeah, I feel bad. You uh, you missed the answer to your own question. Of course, the Vetmont socks. How could we forget? You got to flex the sock brands wherever possible. That's definitely like, that's peak fashion for me when you're wearing like the entire fast fashion brands and then you're wearing some like a hundred pound Vetmont socks or something. That's really the, uh, <laughs> that's peak fashion. That's peak fashion for sure. Um, cool. So let's let's talk about like one one or two more things, and I think I think it's wrapping up time before my voice fully dies. So uh, uh, yeah, have I got any funny reactions in public wearing full tech wear? People definitely avoid me a little bit more if I'm wearing like, especially if I've got like a mask on, which I don't wear that much. But yeah, if I've got like a gaiter around my face or something, then yeah, I, I've definitely seen people be a bit like. And like not really want to talk to me and people as well that would like normally sell you stuff you know people like in the street that would be like oh do you want to sign up to this or whatever they are much more likely to just ignore you when you've got like stuff up to here like hood on looking like a wraith or something yeah they just don't talk to you which is great because i hate talking to random people in public so uh that's a great tech wear benefit uh yeah there's uh that's definitely an extra element of tech wear functionality there. Um, pairing them with pastel colors. Ooh, interesting. Okay, that's cool. Get the pastel stuff in. Imagine a tech ninja going to Walmart. Yeah, exactly. No one understands tech wear life. Like al almost everyone that I know in real life just has like no idea about any of this stuff. 
and they'll just be like, what on earth are you wearing most of the time? And normally they'll like, I'll tell them what acronym is and then they'll look it up and they'll be like, oh my God. Because yeah, I get it. Like, I remember when I was first kind of getting into fashion or whatever and the idea of spending that much money on stuff like blew my mind. Um, so you, you have to warm up to it. You have to work up to it, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I think... I think here is an appropriate time to wrap things up, I think. So let me let me hit up the full screen. So uh, yeah, we, we, went, uh, we went way longer than I was originally going to. The plan was to stream like two hours, I think. And here we are three and a half hours in. Um, so we did a, uh, we did a big, we did a big long XL stream. So, uh, but no, um, to, to answer that as a final question about meeting fans. No, I, I very much appreciate meeting people that appreciate my content. I have had a couple of people being like, oh, I've, I recognize you from, from the YouTube videos or whatever. So yeah, if, if you do see me out there in public, then definitely don't be shy. Like, feel free to say hello. Um, I will, yeah, I'm, I'm always up for that. Or yeah, if you're, if you're repping some cool stuff and you want to be like, hey, I got this thing, like, have a look at it or whatever, then, then yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely up for that. And I'm always up for chatting about tech or stuff with people. So yeah, if you catch me in the real world, then, uh, then definitely say hi. And yeah, thank you to everyone so much for um, for stopping by on this little stream. 150 people concurrent after, yeah, three and a half hours. That is mental. So thank you so much, everyone, for the support. I really appreciate it. Uh, Lee, Elliot, Scott, Biscuit, Meek, Joey, Fui, Scott, uh, Inquisitor. Uh, yeah, all of you guys, Holden. Um, yeah, it's, it's really appreciated you stopping by. So again, thank you. And uh, there'll be another video next week. So can you tag me on Reddit? Yeah, you can definitely tag me on Reddit. You can tag me everywhere. Uh, I can't promise that I'll answer everything, but I will do my best for sure. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, guys. And I'm going to hit... Oh, which stop button shall I press? I'll press this one over here. So yeah, thank you again for watching. And uh, yeah, stay safe, everyone. Stay chill. Drink your, drink your fluids. Stay hydrated. And I will catch you guys next week in the next video. Oh, end.